Today I have a mega fall video. This is part one. Keep watching. Today I have sunflower DIYs for late summer and early fall. I'm Brandy and this is making it my own. Okay, we're going to start off with some ribbon from the Dollar Tree. These are all from the Dollar Tree. I have a pretty gold satin and then some wire ribbons. I got these from the thrift store, but you can get some similar to it at Dollar Tree and at other stores. They're just wall adhesives. And then I have a tag sign that I got from Dollar Tree that I stripped down. I had used it before and I stripped it down and I'm going to use it again. I didn't want to paint the background because I actually like the brown on this. So I'm just going to place these around here and there. Some of these stickers come separate from their leaves and some of them are attached. So you'll kind of see me pulling those apart and adding some different sizes in different places. And I do have some that are going to overlap on the sides. If you know anything about sunflowers, you know that they like to face the sun. So I'm trying to put them all sort of facing in the same direction. Like they're looking for the light. Okay, so just press that down and I'm just going to push it down over the edges and I will um, sand that off at some point. Again, overlapping here, here and there. Just seems to give it a little more dimension when you do it this way. And this almost looks like there's another flower somewhere else like the pattern continues now if you want to seal this you can use any type of Mod Podge that you like and I'm looking at some options here we could trim this out with some ribbon on the bottom if we wanted to and I'm going to use this to make a bow so I'm measuring 16 inches I'm crossing this bow over this is wired ribbon you can get it at Dollar Tree pretty much all the time um, at my stores anyway, so hopefully you can find it. It's really pretty. And you're just going to cross it over and then pinch it up in the middle. And that starts the base of your bow. Very simple. It's easy to adjust at this point. Before you have it tied off or wired off, you can adjust the length of your tails. And you can also adjust them just by trimming it up at, at a later point if you like. I'm going to start with this bigger bow on the bottom. It's the biggest, um, it's the biggest or widest ribbon, so we're going to use that on the bottom. And I'm just going to use some jute, tie that off in the middle. I'm going to leave my jute long so that I can continue to attach the other layers of bow on top. So here's our next layer. We're going to do the same process with the silk. It's a little bit slippery. It's a little bit uh, more difficult to work with because it tries to crawl out of your fingers. Just pinch it tightly. And then you're going to lay that down on top and go ahead and tie that one on. Once you get used to doing it this way, you, you, don't, you don't have to worry about your ribbons getting away from you. That jute is kind of rough and it will it'll hold everything where it needs to be. You can always reinforce that with hot glue if you like or you can use floral wire. Then we're going to top it off with this one. And you can get this one almost all year long too, I believe, at Dollar Tree. Then I'm going to, after I tie it, I'm going to wrap it around to the back, tie it again because I want everything to stay where it is supposed to be. And go ahead and start fluffing that out and moving those loops around where I want them. And then we're going to trim up the tails. I am just going to put these on a slant rather than dovetailing them. Now you can do it any way you want to but it looks more finished to me if you do some type of a intentional cut. But you can leave it, you know, squared if you like it that way. Certainly whatever you like, whatever looks good to you. So now we got this chunky little bow, very rustic looking, and we're gonna go ahead and add it. I'm gonna feed one piece of that jute through the hole and then one over the top and tie that in place. I have left the original hanger there. I found that if you just do a couple of little loops with the jute, a 
couple of little knots that it'll stay, but you can put hot glue on there if you want to. So here is my little hanger, and I was trying to decide if I wanted the knot hidden or on top, but I like it on top. It's more rustic, and you know that's my style, I like the rustic. So I'm gonna take this cute little mini sunflower, and this was thrifted. I got it at the thrift store. You can certainly use the ones from Dollar Tree. And just place that right in the middle. I'm thinking this would look really cute too on a clipboard. Dollar Tree has the little clipboards that are the, the brown color, that natural looking, almost like a cardboard box look. They have those and you could probably get away with doing it that way too. All right, I'm gonna take some of this curved lace trim Pulling on the pieces of thread is going to break that line so that it'll lay a little bit flatter as that's what I'm going to do because I want it to lay flat on the bottom. I'm going to add some glue and then place that right along the bottom. So if you didn't want to use this step, you wouldn't have to, but I feel like it is more rustic if you don't add it. It is more cottage if you do add it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to bring a little more cottage into my home, a little more feminine, and this seems to do the trick. It works for me. Then I'm gonna layer down this satin gold ribbon. It's a beautiful shade. It's a yellowy gold, like a wheat color. I'm gonna wrap it around the back and just tack it down. Very simple. I don't want anything to unravel or come apart. So this is just gonna give it a nice little finished look. All right, and because this has little holes in it and you can see right through it, I'm going to just put the glue right at the edge so that no glue comes bubbling through there. And you can see that gold right through the ribbon. I think that's a nice little surprise touch And then you just press it down to make sure that it's got a good grip on that glue. And wrap it around the back and add a little hot glue. It's storming outside if y'all hear that thunder. Okay, then we're gonna just turn it over and do a little fluffing because we mashed our bow. And there's our pretty little cottage sunflower sign. Cottage sunflower tag sign. I hope you like this one. Pretty simple to do. And here it is hanging up so you can see how it looks. Our next project, we're gonna use some wired ribbon. This is plaid. It came from the thrift store, but I think it came from Hobby Lobby. Then I'm gonna use some more thrifted thread. This is not thread, ribbon. Um, some sheer ribbon and then I have some more ribbon on the side. Gonna use this decorative paper, a hello sign, and then this came from the Dollar Tree. So this is a round from the Dollar Tree. I've got some gold paint here that matches the inside of that sunflower. These are the same stickers that we used on the previous project. And we're gonna carry this over into this project, which is gonna save us a lot of money. So the yellow on the hello sign is not quite the color that I want. I want it to be a little more mustardy, a little more warm for fall. So I'm just gonna go in here and follow that same painted area, the same shaded area, and go over that. And there's a little crack underneath the L. It's just a surface crack, but I do fill that in with some paint, and you can barely see it. And this was thrifted. You know, sometimes you have to, other people overlook things that appear to be damaged, but it's surface damage. So lucky for me, I know how to fix those things, and I grab them up when nobody else will. So I just go on and do that, and I did let that dry and add one more coat afterwards. Take the tag off and clean it up a little bit. I'm just using a little bit of sandpaper to just buff that out a bit. Then I'm gonna take my, this is just decorative paper. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna trace it under my round. And take my scissors and then trim that up. We're going to make a nice big 
almost a semicircle, but actually bigger than a semicircle. And we're going to use this for the bottom part of our sign. Again, no painting necessary. I like the brown that's on there. We're going to leave it just like that. So I'm going to use just a glue stick. Use whatever you have. Jot certainly works great. Um, you can use Mod Podge if that is your adhesive of choice. But we're going to use this because this is what I had by me and it works quickly. So for purposes of video tutorial, this is what I've got. I'm just going to place it down and make sure that it's where it needs to be and take my wooden ruler and just press out any bubble that might be there or any wrinkle. And fortunately enough, there were none. I'm going to start removing my stickers here. I was so happy to find these at Goodwill. I have like six sheets of it. Really nice. And the, um, the image is beautiful. I'm just going to start adding this on here. I'm going to overlap it onto the polka dot part and I'm going to put some on the top part. You can put as many or as little as you like. You can also take your stickers and put them on the bottom section as well if that's what you want to do. But I'm going to do something different on the bottom. So this time I wasn't as concerned about which way my flowers were facing. I just wanted to get them on there. Then I'm going to take my sanding block. You can see that I have some that needs to be trimmed. And I'm just going to go downwards and away. Down and away and just buff off that trim that doesn't need to be there. I also like that it's given that white edge, gives it a little more detail. It's just a little more rustic. This is so easy to do and you get the perfect edge. If you don't like that the white is showing there, you can always take some antiquing wax and fix that. I'm going to do the same thing on my flowers that are overlapping here. Then I'm just going to kind of scratch up the surface of those so they're not so shiny. They're a little more matte and they look like they fit a little better into the aesthetic on the sign. I'm just going to go over the edge of that paper where it meets the board too. Now that looks a lot better to me. It's subtle but it works for me. So after everything is dry we're going to decide exactly where we want to put the little sign. You can use the metal signs from Dollar Tree if you like and paint those. Okay, so let me show you how to make the bow that we're going to make. So, I'm going to use 18 inches of ribbon. I'm going to go over to the mark that I showed you, the 10 inches, and then I'm going to loop over. This doesn't have, uh, it's a pattern on both sides, so you don't have to be real concerned about twisting the ribbon. I'm going to lay it down, and we're going to do 6 inch loops. You can see here that that made a 6 inch loop. I'm going to go down the length of the ribbon. Pinch it in the middle and just check to make sure that we have another six inch loop. See that one is on the other side. I'm going to take another one for this side, pinch it up, make sure that it's the right measurement. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So we have four loops and two tails. So we're going to just pinch this in the middle with a clamp and set it aside. We're going to do the same thing with the Dollar Tree ribbon with the black polka dots. Pinch it up at 10. This time we have to twist because the pattern is only on one side. We're going to do five inches for this one because we want it to be a little smaller. So we pinched and we're going to twist. When you twist it, it puts your pattern on the outside and that's what you want. So there you go, five inches. Then we're going to put this in here. So the polka dot ribbon, we're only going to use two loops. And then the same thing with this sheer green. This is wired. With the sheer green, we're going to do five inch loops, two only. And they're even. I'm just double checking. Now we're going to put this bow together. So holding everything like it was in the clamp, we're going to pinch these together. You're going to take a pipe cleaner, a piece of wire, a piece of jute, or a zip tie and clamp these together. So I did use a zip tie. I'm going to start dovetailing my ends. I hope you like that very detailed description of how to make that bow. 
If you do, let me know because I can certainly take more time when I'm doing bows to help you out if you feel like you need a little extra help in the bow area. All right, now I'm just gonna trim this up where it looks right. I always have an idea of how long I want the tails to be, but once you start fluffing out a bow, you know, you, you know, feel free to go ahead and trim everything, cut things shorter, leave things longer, whatever looks right to you, feels right to you. So that's what I'm doing with all of these. I'm giving them all a little trim and then fluff them out really good. So now it's time to fix our sign down with the lettering. I'm put the lettering on the back. I'm gonna put glue on the lettering on the back side. I'll get it out in a minute. Gotta work quickly so it doesn't dry too fast. And then flip it over, eyeball it, and put it in place. But you gotta move kind of quickly or your glue is going it's not going to grab. It's just going to dry on the back. You can use wood glue or whatever you want to use for this. E6000 if that's what you like. Oh, I used a pipe cleaner. I did not use a zip tie. My bad. Hot glue it down, and I'm just going to use one of these laundry clamps from Dollar Tree to hold it in place until it's dry. Once it's dry, go ahead and do your final little fluffing on your bow to make sure that it's exactly how you want it. I felt like it needed something else on the end, so I'm just going to take a couple of more pieces. These are 10 inch pieces of this polka dot ribbon. I'm gonna put these with dovetails and then I'm gonna add them on each side of the bow. Really easy to do. My wire was sticking out a little too long on one side. <laughs> so, just go ahead and hot glue those in where they look like they make sense. And this is how it looks. If I would have had some wired gold ribbon, I would have used it. Y'all follow me on my social media. Okay, now, Dollar Tree again. This is some Dollar Tree ribbon. I have some green and some brown burlap. I have some thrifted plaid yellow and orange ribbon. And then this one also came from Dollar Tree. It's a wide open burlap. These are thrifted sunflowers, but you can certainly get the ones at Dollar Tree. And this is a Dollar Tree wall adhesive. There's one pattern on each side, and they are really pretty. Very country vibes I'm getting from this. And this is a thrifted piece of sign that I got from Goodwill. You can use any type of plank, or you can use a long sign from Dollar Tree too. There's lots of signs uh, around the holiday times that you can get like the elf sign and such that are long and narrow. Just make sure that whatever sign you get, it's gonna be wide enough to fit your flowers. So I've chosen to do the double one for this sign. And this is actually going to be a, like a porch leaner. It's just a little sign that you can lean against the wall. You can put it outside and lean it against the wall or on your fireplace, mantle, or you know, even on a, a cabinet shelf or something like that. You could also put a hanger on the back if you wanted to. All right, so I'm just gonna place this down. Be sure that you get out all the little white bits that are in there, um, the little sticker pieces that need to come out. Then I'm gonna use this wallpaper smoother and just carefully press this down on the board. If this is something that you would choose to use outside, be sure that you get some Mod Podge or some type of a spray sealer and put that on there to protect it and keep it from peeling off. So here are two different, different types and you can use a sponge brush to put that on. But to make the video quicker, I'm gonna skip that part for now. Now I'm thinking of ways that I can decorate this sitter. And I've decided I'm going to use some jute. So I'm gonna use some hot glue, take this jute, and just randomly wrap it around the bottom of the sign. Around and around we go. Where it stops, nobody knows. And I had a tangle, so I had to edit that part out. Now, we're gonna glue the back down, or you can tie it whichever way you wanna do it. Gluing is a lot simpler in my opinion. And then you're gonna press that down. Protect your fingers, it is hot. 
Now we're going to work on the top. I intentionally left this with a big blank spot on the top because I wanted to do some type of embellishment. You know me, I've got to add a little something extra. So I'm going to layer up my ribbons. We're going to do brown on the bottom, the green in the middle, and then the plaid on the top. Dollar Tree has very pretty fall ribbons too that they put out every year, but we don't have any out at our stores yet, so I'm just using what I had, which is this thrifted ribbon, which looks fall enough to me. It almost looks like candy corn, but it does match the colors that are in my flower. A little hot glue, and I'm just gonna secure this on the back. You could make this complete if you want. You know, if you don't want anybody to see this, I'm not selling it, nobody's gonna see it, so I'm totally cool with it looking like this. But you can certainly cover it up. I'll put some paper on the back and finish it up. Okay, since I used these in another project, they were clamped together. I'm just gonna cut them apart and then start removing the leaves and trim down the stems. Also, you can use any type of sunflower that you like, but I like the color in this one. I'm gonna make a little bow that's a little bit different and I don't think I've made yet on my channel. This is the easiest, one of the easiest bows you can ever make actually. Gonna trim up some more pieces over here. These are all being cut at four inches. Some of these will be used for tails, like this, folded in half, fold it in half. Then we're going to dovetail the ends. I have three green and I have three of the silky wired yellow plaid. That's a big, 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 big description for that little ribbon, isn't it? Okay, and so in the green, we're going to trim that. But we are not going to do that with the brown. The brown is going to be a bow and this is what you do. You're just going to put one down in the middle and crisscross, make an X on top. So a minus sign and a multiplication sign all together. Pinch it up in the middle. Then you're going to use your jute and tie it off. Simplest thing ever. Once you get it in a couple of knots so that it is secure, you can go ahead and fray your edges a little bit to make it look nice and rustic. Right, so we're going to start working on the top and because the end of these leaves are kind of thick where they stick to the stem, I'm going to trim those down so they're not as bulky. They'll lay flatter and it'll be easier to work with with the glue because we're going to be slipping it underneath this ribbon. So it'll lay a lot flatter for us. We're going to try to make our life a lot easier. If we can't find joy when we craft and we're frustrated all the time, then it kind of defeats the purpose. So I like to enjoy what I'm doing. I try to make things as easy on myself as possible. So we're just tucking around the leaves wherever you may want them to go. I love the color on these particular leaves. This that bluish grayish green. I think it looks nice with the colors in that sticker. So then we're going to decide where we want to put the flowers. My stem's a little long, just gonna keep trimming before I get it where I need to. Add a little bit of glue and then tuck it in. I'm just pressing down a little bit to make sure that it doesn't fall out. And we're gonna take the next one, add a little bit of hot glue. And then we're gonna tuck that one in on the other side, on the underside. <laughs> yep, I think I need more coffee, girls. I really think I need more coffee today. So here's our bow. I've got my knots in it, and I'm just gonna trim off what we don't need and decide where we wanna add it. And I like it right here on this corner. It's the simplest little bow. We're going to offset those little tails, fold them over, push them out to the side a little bit so they look like a V, and just layer them in there, here and there, wherever it looks good. It seems like a small thing because it's such a small area on a sign, but be sure you look at it from every direction. 
you know, pick your sign up, look at it. Make sure that you've got plenty of dimension and that you have, you know, a nice distribution of greenery and color and that sort of thing. Because it's going to be more pleasing to the eye when you're finished with your project. And you don't have to go back in and add a thousand things at the end. Get frustrated with yourself because it's not what you thought it was. It's your project. Make it the way you like it. So I've just decided that I needed a little more yellow in here. And I went and picked a few more pieces of scraps that I had. This is just some scrap florals that I had over there in a bucket. And I think they look nice with that. How do you like that? You could put a hanger in the back and use it as a hanging sign if you wanted to. But this is just going to be a leaner for me. See, I'm looking at it from all angles, checking it all out. Now I've put this on the side wall here so you could see what it looks like against the other backdrop. Excuse the crazy lighting in the corner. So what do you think about this one? This is project number three. This is our leaner, our porch leaner. What do you think about this? I like all of the projects because I think sunflowers are amazing. All right, here we go with project number four and our final project. This is probably gonna be the easiest one. I'm gonna use a thrifted milk can or some sort of a vessel. It doesn't have the handles on the side, but you know, you can certainly do this with a bucket and you can do it with something that you find at a thrift store, at a garage sale, whatever. This is for my wall sticker set that came from Dollar Tree and so is the sunflower. It's the other half of the set that we just used. And I'm gonna place it down on this can. I'm just deciding what length I want, how tall I want the flower to go up, if I want some greenery on it. Main thing is the flower. You can put Mod Podge on here first if you would like to make sure that it sticks down. Especially if you have a real shiny surface because these wall adhesives are intended to come off. So, you know, they will kind of lift up if you don't seal them in. So you'd want to put something down on the shiny can or put some chalk paint on it. Put down your flower and then seal over the top of it if you want it to be permanent. Okay, so, but I'm not doing that because you know I like to reuse my things and this is just for instruction to show you what you can do. So I'm just kind of centering that where it looks like it's standing up straight. Probably isn't. And then I'm going to press it down from the center outward with my fingers to make sure I don't have bubbles trapped in there. And if you work from the center outward, then it pushes the bubbles to the edge and they'll come out. And then I'm pressing down the greenery that's attached, so the foliage. And I'm just going to go around the bottom of the can there too. And I'm going to take my blade and trim off what we don't need on the bottom. Keep your fingers out of the way because these things are sharp. These are good, by the way. Um, a little lightweight in your hand, but they are very sharp. And I have found them very, very handy. They came from Dollar Tree. I'm just going around the underside edge and trim that off. And it gives me a cleaner line than it would if I'd cut it with scissors. So I'm just telling you here, just reminding you to cover that if you need to. So because this blessed sign here, uh, sticker, is sheer in the background, it's gonna go straight on top of this like it belonged in here in the first place. So I'm gonna take my little blessed sticker, I'm gonna hold that can where I think it would be centered and then decide where I want to place it. And I like it here a little more toward the bottom. It looks pretty much centered to me, so I'm just going to lay it down gently and press it down. You can certainly use your silhouette or your Cricut and make your own little blessed sign or whatever you choose, gather or whatever. You could even use family, something like that. And I'm going to press that down. And there's my pretty little enamel can. I'm gonna add one more detail to it before I put in some fall 
um, leaves and decor. Just gonna tie that on the bottom, right around the neck. I'm using the silk ribbon, but you could use jute and loop it around a few times. You could use any of the ribbons that you already have from the projects above. And I'm just going to tie that off. Y'all excuse my children, it's summertime and it is wildness going on upstairs. Just a simple bow here to tie off the top. And this looks very farmhouse to me. What do you think? A little rustic farmhouse for you. We've got a bunch of different ways to decorate using wall stickers in this video. So I'm just giving you examples of what you might want to use, what you maybe could put in there. These are a variety of little picks that came from Hobby Lobby and Dollar Tree. And of course, by Hobby Lobby, I mean Goodwill. And then I have these that I decided to use. This is like a seeded grass. And I'm gonna put these in the top. Just gonna bend it over so I can use it again. And I added some wheat picks that I got from the thrift store as well. And this is how it looks. What do you think about that? I think that's pretty nice. You can definitely get wheat stems for yours too and you can get them at Dollar Tree. These are uh, dried stems, but you can get the ones that are the plastic kind and they'll last you for probably ever. These, you have to really baby these real wheat dried stems, <laughs> but they're worth it. Which project was your favorite? I hope you come back and watch more of my videos and I thank you so much for stopping by. See you again soon. Bye. Today I have five rustic and farmhouse fall DIYs. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. Alright, number one is going to be a window cling sign. I got mine from Walmart last year on clearance, but you can get yours anywhere. This is just a Dollar Tree sign. It's a rectangle sign. And then I got some of this wallpaper from Dollar Tree. This is fairly new, I think. It is to my store anyway. I love the way that it looks. We're gonna make this sign over. So I'm just start off by taking that string out of there. You can save it to use again. And then I'm just gonna try to line up where those planks are to where the plank is on my sign. You can just use a clip to hold it in place. I'm gonna trace it out with a pencil on the back side and then cut that out. You can use your scissors or a rotary cutter or whatever you have, whatever works for you. And it's gonna line up just right. Okay. Yep, that'll work. Now I'm gonna remove the backing. It comes off very easily. And then just like a puzzle, I'm gonna fit that right on the top of it carefully press it down flip it over press it down again and I'm going to use my little wallpaper tool here to smooth it out that was easier than using craft paper and a glue stick love this stuff then I'm just going to take a piece of sandpaper and just go around the edges to give it a nice clean finish this just happens to be from my, my hand sander, but it was nearby, so I went ahead and used it. Works great. So doesn't that look like it was supposed to be on there? It's perfect. Now I'm gonna take this beautiful two pumpkins, and I'm going to use my glue, my little glue stick, and I didn't wanna mess up my tabletop, so I'm just doing this on the back of the of the cling paper and I'm just gonna run that glue stick all over the back all around the edges so that I can put this down on my sign and I'm just gonna center it by eye press it down with my hands always pressing from the center outward so you can press any bubbles out that might be there and then I'm just gonna use this little tool again to press it all down 
Now I'm going to give you some options. You can use one of these little signs and glue it down if you would like. You can get those at Dollar Tree. You can also use any type of a wall sticker from Dollar Tree. This is the piece I had left. You can go ahead and add a bow here if you would like. And this is a very simple bow for you. Crossing it over, pinching it in the middle, tie it off. And then you could just use some hot glue and glue it down. Easy bow. You can put it on the side, you can put it on the top. Or you can just not put anything else on there at this point. I am going to distress the edges of my paper just a little bit, or that wallpaper. And I'm just putting this on a damp piece of fabric that I have. I'm just putting this antiquing wax on here. And I got a little dot on there, but that's okay. I'm gonna use my little Dollar Tree brush and pat some of that out. And then I'm just gonna go along on the edges of my board. Just gonna kind of lay it down. And then in a minute, we'll be blending it in a little bit. And you won't see all those rough lines. It'll just give it more of a rustic look. And I think this will be a cute little farmhouse piece. So I'm just going to take a dry paper towel here and just kind of in a circular motion rub this in around the edges of the sign. It's very subtle. You can also add this on the insides a little bit like I'm doing here. Whatever look you're going for. Then I'm using the same hanger and I'm putting it on the, on the top and using a little bit of paper to glue that down. Next I'm going to take some of these acorns and just add those up in the little corners. Same thing here, you're gonna take your glue stick, put that on and just put, I just wanted to put mine up into, into the corners. Same process, smoothing it down. Now you can go over the top of this if you want to with some Mod Podge. What do you think about this? Project number one. Okay, number two is a chalkboard sign. I'm using copper because I am loving copper and I have been for the past two years. But since I'm going a little more in the cottage core direction in my home, I'm going to add a little more copper this year. This is some beautiful ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree last year. And I thrifted these little leaves with the copper on them, but you could just get the little chipboard leaves and paint them copper if you would like, however you want to do yours. I'm just taking the two, putting them in the corners, and then I'm gonna make a little, a little riser or a spacer out of this scrap piece of wood on the back of the bigger leaf so that it'll give it some dimension and it will stand up from that sign. A little glue here, and I'm just gonna place it down. These leaves are beautiful. I love this, I love the effect. And it's very rustic. Okay, so now with this gorgeous ribbon, I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I've just got a little piece of a sign here so that I don't cut my table. And I'm going to show you two options for a banner. We're going to start the first one off just cutting triangles just like this. And you can have a little pennant with triangles. And then I'll show you one other way. I'm just going to go down here and cut these pieces out. However many pieces is going to be depending on the word that you choose to put on yours. I'm going to use fall, so I'm really only going to need four. I have a jar of scrap jute and string. I'm just going to choose a piece that's long enough. Protect my fingers because this part you will get burned if you don't. That edge is a wire edge, so it gets really hot on your ribbon. Be very careful. Press it down, of course with the wrong finger, you know, because that's what I do here on my channel. And I turn it over and press it down. Going to do the same thing for each one of those until I get enough on there to go across the top of my sign. And this is how it will look if you decide to use the little triangles. You would just use a little glue and just glue that down. Here's the other option. Same ribbon. And we're going to use, I'm just using my little cutter here. 
and I'm going to do one and a half inch slices. I'll only need four. I always do an extra or two just in case I mess something up. So I'm only going to need the four for fall. Cut those out. I love this little cutter, it's perfect. And I have already cut one edge of that wire off, of the wire ribbon, so that it's loose. You can see here that piece is gone, and I'm cutting up to that next little section. So it's like a brown, then an orange, then a beige, and I'm just cutting up toward the next row. That way all my pennants are the same size. Now, you can use this type. And the four will fit perfectly across the top so that I can spell fall. And I like that one a little bit better for this project. Now we're gonna make our little hanger. I'm gonna use a little bit of glue and just put this piece of jute around the top. And then you can start deciding where you want to put your pieces. There's just a couple of little frayed areas. I'm cleaning that up. I want this to look high end. So with a little hot glue, I'm gonna start on the outsides first and just glue that piece of wired edge right down onto the jute. For all four of the pieces. Be very careful that you don't burn your fingers because this stuff is really hot underneath that wire edge. Okay, now I thrifted these, but you can use stickers or whatever you have to spell out fall. These are little copper, they almost look like coins, and they are metal. And I thought they would look beautiful on the sign for that rustic look. But first, I've got to fill in the space between the fabric and the board. So we're going to use these little pieces of adhesive foam and just stack them together. Now you can use glue dots, you can use, I know Dollar Tree has something like this. Mine came from the thrift store, but you can get them from um, Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to make it where it's almost as tall as the, the thickness of my frame so that it will stand out. If you use a lightweight sticker, you might not need to do this, but these coins or these little pieces of metal are a little heavy. Um, and don't worry, you can see through that sheer ribbon, but you won't see it after we get those down. And when you put your sticker on, if you use a sticker, you won't see it either. Just gonna use a little hot glue. Again, be careful when you're using metal and hot glue. It gets really, really hot. And then do that for each one of these. So which of the banners would you have used? This one or the triangle? Give me a thumbs up if you like number two. All right, moving on to number three, which is going to be a versatile pumpkin sign that you can use two ways. This came from Dollar Tree and I'm using this sandpaper here and it is a very rough sandpaper and that's what you want because you wanna, when you spray paint this, you wanna be sure that it is going to hold onto that shiny plastic. So you wanna rough your surface up. I'm going in all of those little cracks and everything. Wipe it off, then take your copper spray, take it into a well ventilated area, protect your surface and spray it down. I gave it two coats and let it dry in the sun. Then I'm going to use a little palette that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take some antiquing wax. This is going to be the base, but I want to color my base. So I'm using a baby wipe and some of my antiquing wax. I am just rubbing that together and I'm going to start applying it to this palette. I'm gonna rub it in, in all the spaces in between, on the slats on the bottom. We're gonna go around back and do all of this too, because you, again, we're striving for high-end looks, we need to be sure that everything is well thought out and completed. So that's what we're doing here. All right, set it aside, let it dry. 
Once it is dry, we are going to apply this pumpkin to our palette sign. And you can see here in that center groove, the pumpkin will fit. It'll sit down in there. Now it won't stay on its own, so you're gonna have to take a good bit of a strong glue. You might even wanna use some E6000 or something like that um, in here too. Glue that down. You're gonna need to hold it and then add some glue and some popsicle sticks or I took the tops of some scrap paint stirrer sticks that I had to go across there and to hold it down. So you want it to go across the bottom of the pumpkin and onto the palette. This is gonna give it a really strong hold. This has stayed in place and I have not had any problems. I've had it for a week now and it is still going strong over there. So now you've got a freestanding copper pumpkin sign. Another way you can use this as, is as a planter. You're gonna take whatever color greenery that you want, put it in a little vase or a jar on the back side. You'll never see it, so it doesn't matter. Start filling it in, fluffing it out, and then now you have, look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's another farmhouse piece for you. Do you like this project, number three? Follow me on social media. Farmhouse pumpkin number four. Okay, this one came from Walmart originally and I got it at, of course, the thrift store. I'm gonna start by removing everything off of here. Look at the staple in this thing. I thought it was glued and I was getting weak, but then once I pulled it out, Look at the size of the staple. Wow, it was not going out by itself. Okay, then I'm going to remove these signs because I can use these words again. So if I'm gentle with them, I can use them again and don't break them. Taking out the nails, taking off the words, popping those little metal flowers off as well. Gotta be real careful. Now I'm gonna take a rough grit sandpaper, take off the glitter all the glitter and then I'm gonna go over those holes where the where the nails were and the other hardware look at my little this is how I clean my table off y'all so cute okay then we're gonna use some tissue paper from Dollar Tree and I just absolutely love all of those pieces we're gonna take that chalk paint, shake it up real good. It's thick, so I don't have to worry about covering those holes ahead of time. That is not gonna be a problem. Gonna start laying on that chalk paint to get us a nice, smooth, opaque surface for when we lay that sheer tissue paper on top of it. You're just gonna go around the whole entire top of that pumpkin just like that. I'm trying to avoid to get paint in those cracks. I really don't wanna to try to get it in there. But if you do, once it is dried like this, take an emery board, it'll fit right down in the cracks and just saw it back and forth. It's gonna help get that nice and clean for you. You can also go over it with a marker or a pencil. Okay, so in order to put our tissue paper on, we're going to be using some Mod Podge. I'm going to squirt some on here, squirt some on here and here. I'm going to use a damp paintbrush and I'm just gonna start brushing this on all around the edges, the corners, the little slat grooves, everything. Get all the way up on the stem. Everything that is going to have tissue on it needs to be covered in Mod Podge. Sometimes it's unavoidable and you miss a spot, but you can go fix it like I'm gonna show you how I have to fix it. Okay, we're gonna place it down very gently and start pressing down from the inside outward. You can pick that paper up if you're very careful, press it out. Now, if you miss a spot, just go back over like I'm doing here and press it back down. Oh, this is beautiful. I love this paper. It's so farmhouse. Once it's dry, take your sanding block and very carefully, so you don't tear anything, just start sanding downward and away from your pumpkin, just like this. and it's gonna shear those edges off and make a perfect, almost like it was factory made that way. Look at that, can you believe the difference between this pumpkin and the other? 
craziness. Okay, I'm going to take my rotary tool, go right down those grooves, and just make a little slice. And we're going to go back over with some more Mod Podge. This time I'm using about a teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons of water with a little bit of that Mod Podge. It's going to be very thin. And I'm going to take a flat brush and start putting that on the top. This is going to seal that beautiful paper in. And keep that nice and secure for you so nothing comes off. Now you're going to go around all your edges just like I'm showing you here and then right in the groove. That's why you got that brush like that. You see how thin that tip of that brush is? Go right in that groove. Watch it darken up. Look at that. Now it looks like it was painted on. Isn't that wonderful? What a cool trick. Okay, so there she is. And now we gotta let this pumpkin go dry. Don't worry if you get wrinkles in it. If you, you know, that's not a big deal. Once it's dry, we're gonna start doing a little embellishment for it. And I wanna start by making a lace bow for the top. This is kind of shabby chic, I think, but it's also farmhouse. So you decide, what would you call it? All right, I'm gonna cut, you know, you can do six to eight pieces of whatever type of lace ribbon you have or whatever ribbon you have. If you don't wanna use lace, you can certainly try something else that will match. But since I'm keeping it farmhouse neutral, I went with the white. And I'm using some white ribbon to tie it. So I put it in an X pattern, I'm pinching it up in the middle. And then I'm gonna add my ribbon on and tie it down. If you have some other type of white jute or white cord, you can certainly use that if you don't have this ribbon. Whatever you need to use. We're all about saving money here, so we try to be versatile. And once the bow is made and tied securely, we're gonna start just dovetailing those ends. On every one. You can do a slant, you can do whatever you like to the ends of these bows. You can leave them square if you would like. I've just found that they look a little bit nicer and more finished if you do a little something extra, something intentional. So I'm just fluffing and twisting around here. And then I'm gonna get my hot glue, put it in the center. And I'm going to put that right up there at the base of the stem. At this point, you could call it done if you would like. Make sure if you're fluffing that you're holding it down while you're fluffing so you don't pull it out of the place and make a mess with all that glue. Okay, but I wanted to do extra, of course. So I am going to take some of this um, greenery and since it's the same greenery that you can see in the, the pattern here, I thought it would be pretty and appropriate. So I'm just gonna add that with a little bit of hot glue. Don't overdo it with the hot glue if you're planning on repurposing your items. Just do what you need to do without going overboard because it's easier to clean up and remove later if you want to repurpose. And you can always save that greenery for some other project as well. I'm just doing what feels right. Put just a couple of pieces here, a couple pieces there. You can cut your things, use a wire cutter. If it's, you know, really strong, you don't want to ruin your scissors, but get in there and, and do what you want to do with it. You bought it, make it, make it your own. Okay, so what do you think? Would you have left the bow without putting the greenery or, or what? Do you like this one? Okay, final project, and this is my favorite. I saved it for last. This is the calendar sign. This is from a package of calendars last year. They do have this in the calendars if you're fortunate enough to find them this year, but I think the background is white. This sign that's on top of here uh, also came from the Dollar Tree. This was in the summer collection. You're just gonna trace that out, cut it out, and then this will fit right on top of that 
faux wood round. That's what we're going to call it, a faux wood round. Sounds fancy. Have y'all been able to find the new calendars? Because I have not. I don't know what's going on. Okay, glue stick. You know me and my glue sticks. I'm gonna go over this project thoroughly, and then I'm going to lay this down on top. Then start pressing it out from the center outward in all directions, and then use my wallpaper smoother to press it down. Okay, take your sandpaper, same thing, go around your edges with your sandpaper, and just shear off those edges to make a nice smooth finish. Then we're going to have to have something to attach this down to that little flat basket or paper plate holder or whatever you want to call that thing. I got it from the thrift store, so I really don't know what it was originally intended for. We're going to put down our pieces of wire with a little bit of paper so that we can put this on and have a good good grip we don't want anything falling apart so here we go i've let the glue dry and now i'm just lifting those pieces of pipe cleaners up so that i can press it through this little piece of whatever wicker is this wicker cane i'm not sure what it is we're gonna call it a basket. How about that? It's a basket. Then you're just going to twist it down and push it down. Twist and push it down. You wanna lay it flat because you wanna protect your surface when you hang it up. Okay, it already looks fantastic, right? You could leave it just like this. You could go to Dollar Tree and get a $1 pick that's already put together for you. How simple is that? I'm taking a pipe cleaner, but you can certainly use wire or you can use jute, whatever you wanna use and just go ahead and secure this down to that basket right in the top center. All right, flip it over, turn that little knobby piece up so it's out of the way. We don't wanna see that in the front. And then clip it off. The next thing we're gonna do is work on a little bow. This is the same bow that I showed you earlier. I'm showing the same bow in a lot of projects because it seems to be the most easy one for people to understand and replicate. And it's such a simple bow. When you're doing a style that's not real fancy or glamorous, it really does fit into a lot of your decor pieces. All right, so I'm dovetailing the ends. Um, by the way, I have about a foot and a half of this plaid. This came from Dollar Tree. It's not as good a quality as the orange that you're going to see me cut next. This one is some fantastic ribbon. I should have gotten a lot of more of this. And this is leftovers from last year, by the way. I haven't found the new ribbon this year. I'm fold it over and dovetail it. Look how thick this stuff is. This is nice. Very nice ribbon. So I'm going to loop them over like this, hold it in the center, and then pinch it down. Simple. Use whatever bow technique you like, whatever type of bow you want to do. I'm showing you a simple version to make life a little bit easier. Going to do the same thing with the plaid. We want to stack them on top of each other. And I'm going to take a little piece of jute scrap that I have and I'm going to tie it down. Do y'all save your jute too? I save stuff. I save the little hangers that come off of things. I save all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I do. I think that's kind of common for crafters though. All right, you're gonna at least want a double knot in there because you don't want it to come apart when you are trying to fluff it out. And once you get it like you like it, go ahead and take the extra ends of that jute, thread it through the back of that basket, and just tie it right securely on there. and trim off the extra pieces. Now we're gonna get the bow fixed right. 
I'm gonna curl the little tails under, cut them shorter if you like. I don't want them to be in the way of my words, so I do trim them in a bit, but I don't think that is in the video. And then to keep these letters where you can see my words, I'm just gonna take a little hot glue and then gently rub the leaves into place. This is also a good way to make your picks look a little more high-end when you're using them in signs and in um, other pieces of decor where they're kind of laying against something as you can stretch them out. You know, you get them at Dollar Tree, they've been stuffed in a box. They're kind of, some of them look kind of sad. And you see my sunflowers kind of, kind of sad looking there. We're gonna fix that and we're gonna fix that greenery so it stands out and it looks nice and crisp. Taking some hot glue and putting it down either on the sign or next to that wicker basket. We're just pressing that down. It's making everything stand apart and stand out. Little drops of glue, stretching it over, pressing it down. You see how the leaves now will stand out a little bit more? That looks more high end, just in my humble opinion. And also, my flower looks kind of sad, so I'm just gonna take a pencil and my fingers with a little hot glue and just put those layers together so that the top layer will pull upwards on the bottom layer and make it look a lot more together. That's a major improvement, right? Yeah. So now we're gonna do just a little something on the bottom. I'm gonna take about six inches of this orange and I'm gonna do five inches of the black and white. I'm just gonna dovetail it and then lay it down. I'm gonna do them both. Then I'm gonna use some hot glue to attach them together on the bottoms. This is why you want one to be shorter than the other. Put the longer one in the back. This way we can see both layers. And I'm just trying to get an idea of how I want these to be splayed out or displayed. And I think I wanna put them right under the edge. Now this will be sandwiched between the basket and the back of the sign. So I don't wanna damage my basket I'm going to glue this down to the back of that sign. And there you go. Press it down. Then I'm going to take some of this bittersweet that came from Dollar Tree. I've just pulled those off the branches. I'm going to add a little hot glue. And then here and there, I'm going to add the bittersweet. It's so pretty. And just pop those little bits of fall all over the sign. I'm going to add some to the top as well. Until I get the look that I am going for. Just kind of putting them in a triangle shape there. And this is how it looks. One more piece is needed on the bottom, I think. Just to elongate just a little bit, even it out right between those layers. What do you think about project number five? Which one is your favorite? Let's run back over all of the projects and you can tell me which one you like best because I'm really interested to know. Okay, so here's that pumpkin with the greenery. And then I will show you what it looks like if it's standing alone. Here is our farmhouse pumpkin. And those look really good together, I think. You can see how they're displayed. And then here is our rustic goodies. There's the chalkboard sign, the calendar sign, and the window cling sign. I'd love to know your opinion. What's your favorite? Did you enjoy this video? And are you working on your fall crafts yet? Thank you so much for watching and for all of your support. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Today we're doing three rustic cottage DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own.
Okay, so number one is the pumpkin sign. I'm gonna use some stickers of your liking. We're gonna take some of this gorgeous wallpaper that came from the Dollar Tree. And this pumpkin was thrifted. I'm gonna give you these measurements so you can see. It looks like about 18 inches by 16 inches. But you can use whatever wooden pumpkin form you wanna use and just cut yours down accordingly. So I'm getting an idea here of how I wanna place this down and looking at the pattern. Once you make that decision, you can peel your backing off and place it down. Gonna use my wallpaper um, flattener, a little tool here, and just rub that out. And then I wanna show you with this wallpaper, if you don't put it on here right, see that? You'll mess your pattern up. You wanna continue your pattern by turning your paper correctly. Go ahead and peel your other side off. Start pressing that down from the inside outward. Then I just pressed on my edge with my fingernail so I would know where to trim it. Gonna cut that off with my scissors. And then press that out. Always press from the inside outward so you can make those bubbles run from you. They'll go right off the edges. Then in order to trim this up, you can certainly use whatever cutting tool that you have. I'm still getting used to this knife, although I am enjoying it. It's still sharp and I've used it on several projects. It comes in a three pack from Dollar Tree. If you press it kind of straight up and down against the edge of that pumpkin and you get it positioned correctly, you won't splinter the wood. I did in a few places, but it won't matter because you won't be able to see it. But just go around the edges as closely as you can. I've got a couple of places that look rough. See, it peels off very nicely. And then up here on the stem, we're gonna do something different. You can continue your pattern with your scraps of paper if you would like, but I am going to cut that off of mine because I wanna make a different type of stem. And then peel that off. Okay. Now I'm looking at embellishments for my sign. And I've got some leaves and some sunflowers that I got from the thrift store. This looks like maybe it came from Hobby Lobby or Michaels. I really didn't pay attention. Take your sanding block, go around your edges. This is going to flatten it down and give it a nice, clean, smooth edge. Okay, so I'm going to use a scrap of scrapbook paper. And I'm going to use that on the top. It just looks like a piece of wood. So I'm going to measure it out. Use my glue stick, put that down on there really nicely all the way to the edges. You can overlap onto your wallpaper if you'd like, however you want to do this. And then I'm going to place that down right there. Rub it with my fingers, get my little tool, and press it down. Once that done is done, you know the routine. Get your knife, whatever cutting tool you want to use, and go around the edges. And then, of course, after you have trimmed it off, then you're gonna use your sanding block and make it nice and smooth. Just like so. Okay, so this is the base and this is what we're going to embellish now. So you can use your Cricut or whatever you wanna use, um, but I'm using these large stickers that came from the thrift store. I was lucky enough that I had F-A-L-L -L. You'll see me putting those down here. I'm using the ruler. I lined it up with the ridges of those um, stripes or lines. I'm just gonna place them down just gently. I'm not gonna push anything down until I'm sure that I have it where I want it. In a moment, you will see that I have slid the ruler down about two, maybe an inch and a half, two inches, and moved all those letters down some. So see, they're, they're down a little bit more. If you're going to use thin curly letters like this, you need to kind of be careful so that you don't pull your letters apart. They're kind of fragile. So you'll see me kind of patting it down and then going with the, the edges so I don't tear anything. Next, we're going to work on our bow. Simple bow. I've been doing a lot of these lately. Cross it over. And then once you get your tails the right measurement. I want these to be very long on this bow. Cut them down. Then you're just going to pinch up your middle. Pinch it, pinch it from underneath and above. And there's your little bow. Take your clamp 
hold it in place and you can start on the next bow that'll go on top. These are both ribbons that came from the Dollar Tree. Same process here. Pinch the bottom up toward the middle, pinch the top down toward the middle. Then you're going to take your two bows, stack them on top of one another. You can get a scrap of jute, you can use floral wire, you can use a twist tie, you can use anything that you want here to hold these two bows together. I'm going to use this jute, give it a couple of tight knots so that my bow doesn't fall apart, and then you're going to dovetail all of your ends. You know, it wouldn't be a complete video for me if I didn't get completely out of the camera angle at some point. So you're welcome for that. Now I'm going to take some glue on the top a good bit because I want my bow to stay on here. I'm going to be tugging around on that bow a good bit. Um, we're going to do some interesting things with the tails, so just stay tuned for that. We don't want it to come loose. Alright, so I got my leaves out and I'm kind of sorting them into colors and shapes over here on the side. It just helps me to work. I'm going to take some hot glue and start putting those around on the top. I wanted to tuck one under there, so there it is. The colors are beautiful in these leaves. You can definitely use picks from the Dollar Tree, but this is what I had and it ended up costing me less than it would have at the Dollar Tree by using these thrifted pieces. So I'm just going to trim up what needs to be trimmed up and start laying my leaves down on the bottom. So we have some on the top and I'm going to add some on the bottom. You know my plans always kind of get off track, but that's okay. When you're doing something for yourself, you do it to your own liking. And for some reason, no matter what plans I make for crafts, my mind takes me another place. I, I start looking at it, I stop thinking about it, and I just start going about how I feel, and I just put things down based on how I feel. Now, I suggest you do the same, because you'll be happy with your results if you do that. Stay true to yourself. Make something that's going to bring you some joy. So these are just felt sunflowers, but they're so pretty. I love how colorful they are, and that they have the stitching makes them very pretty. So I'm just going to fix my leaf there to make it lay flat, add in another sunflower and leaf or two. So I'm saving my darker leaves, the red, the burgundies, for another project. So be sure that you subscribe so you can see those if you're into the richer dark, dark colors. So I'm just taking a spool that I had for some deco, I think it was mesh. And I'm just going to curl that around like you curl your hair on a curling wand and just pull it out the bottom and look at those cute little curls. This is what I think makes it cottage looking. Of course the felt, you know, you got your mixed media here and, and your curly letters. So it gives it kind of a cottagey look, kind of a feminine look. So I thought the tails for this would be really cute. It's kind of playful, don't you think? But you do yours however you want. And you're going to take those tails to keep them from falling down because it's a lot of ribbon so it's kind of weighty. Once you hang it, it may fall down over your letters so just, you know, tack it down on all your little tails there. And this is how it looks so far and I decided to use these butterfly stickers that I got from Dollar Tree. They did have a holographic background but I took those off as soon as I bought them so they are in two pieces. I just wanted the top layers. Um, I'm using a little hot glue and I'm just adding those down here and there where the little butterflies would normally light. Again, this is adding some cottage look to my rustic decor. And so I think this type of thing does the trick. What do you think? All right, last part for this is going to be putting your tag on here and I'm just using a hanger off of another project because I always save these. It's got a little hard plastic piece. I'm going to press it down into the glue here and here underneath my stem and that will complete my first project. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and making it my own Instagram. Next project is a fall fox pot. 
These little things come from the Dollar Tree. They are so cute. I knew I had to have one. I just wasn't quite sure what to do with them until I saw it in person. And then I thought, yep, this is going to be a little planter pot. So he's perfect. Be sure you check yours and make sure it's not broken before you leave the store. I just have a foam ball here. Use a square. Use whatever you have as long as it fits. I'm going to add some hot glue on it so it won't move around. I have hot bush from the Dollar Tree. I have a thrifted pick. And then I have some maple garland from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to dismantle my maple garland, pull off all of these little pieces because we are going to transform this one garland into several leaf picks. So here's the stem where I cut my hot bush off. I cut those off halfway so that they would be short. Now I'm going to take the remainder of those and cut those off to use as picks to go in our leaves. So nothing is wasted here. Isn't that perfect? You can use a dot of glue if you need to to hold these in place. I did on a few of these, but most of them fit nicely on the stem so they won't slide around. So simple. And you get a whole lot of picks for just the price, I guess, of $2. Okay, so you're going to push those in and place them around. Now you know with your arrangements, be sure that you are following some type of a pattern. You want to put your greenery um, down first. This is a short squatty arrangement, so I'm going to place these down and to not completely cover his face. I want to leave a little opening there. And I'm kind of following a pattern. You want to do somewhat triangle, so there's one, two, three, our hot bush is in a triangle. I'm going to add here so there's a triangle on the top as well. Then I'm going to add in some more of those where it makes sense to me. Here are the little berries from that garland. I'm using those too. And I'm just going to fluff those out. Okay. Now, moving on to this. I only had one of these picks. I'm going to take it apart because it was really too big for the project anyway. Pull all those pieces off. They don't have little openings on the end where you can push a pick through them. So I'm going to show you an alternative way to make picks out of these. Take one or two of these, put them together, line them up on another piece of that wire that you have, of the, uh, the pick wire, and then start twisting and pulling on the floral tape. When you pull a floral, the floral tape, that's what makes it start to stick. It's waxy. It's not sticky like a regular tape, so don't be misled by that. Put a little bit of pressure on that and twist it. Then when you pull the end loose, it will stick to itself and it makes the perfect little pick. It's dark green. You can get these um, floral tapes in a variety of colors, but it matches what I'm doing and you can't see anyhow down on the inside of this little short squatty arrangement. So I'm just going to place these around where they're not too close to one another so they're spread out and that the color green is spread through here. I think these colors are perfect for a cottagey feel. What do you think? Okay, so I have a couple of little pieces left that were broken and I'm just gonna go in and add those in here. And by broken, I mean they were, I didn't have enough picks for them and some of them had a little bit of damage on the stem and they needed a little bit of extra love. So I just fixed them up and now I'm going to glue those in. Okay, so here's the base of a pick. We're going to cut all that randomness off the top. I'm going to use this little fall piece that I took off of a pumpkin that I did earlier. And I'm going to add that right on there. Trying to put it in a place where it's not so obvious that there's a big green pick behind it. Clean up any extra glue before it dries. And then I'm going to press that down into there. And it's really not even going to be noticeable. Oh my goodness, the cuteness. What do you think? I'm having all kinds of Dollar Tree cuteness with these projects. Love him. Okay, number three is a fall window box. This is another little cutie. We're going to use this window that came from the Dollar Tree. 
It did originally have a little sign on it that I took off and I've used this project, this um, window previously. So now I'm going to choose some ribbon and I'm gonna take my copper paint, take my family out and I'm gonna spray paint it. Once it's dried thoroughly, I'm gonna bring it back in and decide where I want to place it. I'm gonna take a thrifted box here. You can definitely get these types of boxes at the Dollar Tree. They're little box signs. Get one that is going to fit along with your window. I'm taking some brown paint. I'm gonna take it outside, spray, spray paint it with a good coat to cover up the blue. And then once it is thoroughly dry, I'm gonna bring it back in. I've just picked a little chipwood piece of um, a little scarecrow over there. I'm gonna use him in here too. I'm gonna take some of this faux leather ribbon from the Dollar Tree, flip it over, go right along that line in the window and glue it down. Careful with your fingers. Okay, now this is gonna give us a little more surface area to glue down that sign so that we'll have a good grip and it won't fall off. I'm just going to add some glue here and there, working quickly. You can certainly use some E6000, but you're gonna to have to wait a while for it to dry if you do that. So this works quicker for me. And it actually sticks very well to that faux leather ribbon, FYI. Okay, this is a little thrifted wreath, little tiny wreath. I think it was actually in like napkin rings or something, but I've been using them in projects and I love them. They're so cute, so rustic. I'm gonna add that on, put the glue where I think it needs to be, and I'm gonna use some popsicle sticks so that we can secure down our box to the window. So I don't want it to be sunken down. I want it to stand up. I'm gonna split a popsicle stick so that it fits without being seen. I'm going to put my glue down on the side. It's going to reach all the way up there to where my ribbon is. Do the same thing on the other side. I want everything to be secure. So I know I want to put it here. I'm just doing a little measuring here. Adding my glue. I'm going to flip it over and line it up carefully and then press it down. Hold it for a minute. When it starts to set up, then you can flip it over. I'm just pressing it down to make sure it's got a good hold. Then I'm gonna take an extra popsicle stick. I'm gonna put glue on it and put it right over that crack right there. I did hold that for a while to make sure it was thoroughly dried. I'm gonna use my metal ruler and a piece of this round foam. I think I got this from the Dollar Tree. I'm not certain, but I think it, it was in a two pack that came from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna cut that down so that it will fit inside the box. This accidentally gave me the perfect fit and I didn't have to glue it. And then I'm gonna take my little scraps here and I'll use those two to fill in in the sides. It does not have to be perfect, guys. It really doesn't. And you'll see, everything's gonna stay in place nicely. Okay, so you could use scraps if you have scraps. This is some wood shred. You can use anything that you have. You can use raffia, you can use a hula skirt, whatever you wanna use. This looks like hay to me, so I thought it would be appropriate for this little pumpkin patch that we're gonna put outside of this window. I'm not even gluing it down because my picks will hold it in place. I've taken some boxwood picks that I have. They are just some that were thrifted. I've pulled them off and used them several times off of other bigger picks. I'm gonna put them beside my window. I'm using a thin pick to put on the back of my scarecrow so that he has legs to stand on. And then these are just some, the kind of sad looking pumpkins that I thrifted and I've used in other projects. I'm going to put pieces of this wire into it. It's a sturdy wire, so it's almost like a pick. You can certainly use picks, even toothpicks if you need to. Even a little hot glue in there if you need to keep it in place. I'm gonna put these at angles not gonna put them straight down because pumpkins don't naturally grow straight up and down. I'm gonna put one in the back, some in the front, and this is what we have so far. It needs one more little bush right there in the center, I think. We're gonna stand up Mr. Scarecrow and add a little hot glue to this little piece of pick that I had left out of that bunch. It's growing right out of the ground by his feet. And then one more pumpkin in here. I 
Okay, so I've decided to carry that color from the bottom up to the top, and I'm going to use these ribbons. This particular plaid ribbon came from Dollar Tree, and the rickrack was given to me by a neighbor who was sorting through and going to donate some of her ribbons. I'm going to do really simple shoelace bow here. Pull it down, get it pretty, make it how you like it. If you keep fooling with it, you will make it perfect. Do the same thing here because we're going to layer them. This is a little bit more difficult to work with, but keep messing with it and you will get it right. And then it's going to go a little bit off to the side. I'm going to cut these at a slant. Add some hot glue. Put it just off to the side here. And you certainly don't have to glue down the tails if you don't want to. I felt it was pertinent at the time, so I went ahead and did it. All right, and then we're going to put this layer right on the top. And my napkin was sticking to my background there. But this is how he looks. Look at that cute. Wouldn't you love to look out your window and see that? That is so cute. Or walking down the street in the country, walking down the little gravel road and look over and see your neighbor's house with a beautiful wreath on their window. Perfect. Here are our three projects. These are our rustic cottage projects for fall. I think they're all appropriate. I think they have that little cutesy element. They are very affordable. They all feature Dollar Tree items from this year. I'm so happy you stopped by and I hope to see you again real soon. Thanks for watching guys. Bye. Today we have three Apple DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. All right, I'm gonna start off with this little apple ornament. This was a, I believe from Target. This was also rifted and it came from Dollar General. And then this came from Target, I believe as well, originally. I got these all at the thrift store. This is a dry erase sign. You can use either sign, either side of that sign if you want to. Of course, we're going to start by taking the tag off. We're going to take off the hanger and then any tags that you have, you can go ahead and remove those. Then decide how you want to put this on this paper. This is a great little back to school project that I think would be cute for a teacher. And I'm going to show you a lot of options, so be sure you keep watching. I'm going to take some of this red twine and just go ahead and cut it and get it ready. And then I don't need these long strings hanging down, but I do need a little bit of string in the front, so I'm just going to glue them down. And then because I don't want this sign, this writing that's already on there to show, it's a little sarcastic probably for, for actually having it at school if you're a teacher, just going to trace some construction paper or some uh, poster board, which is what I have, and I'm just going to trim it down. I just have a small paper trimmer here. Cut it down to the right size, trim off these pieces of cord, and then I'm going to use some hot glue to put this down on here and cover it up. There is going to be some gapping from the bulk on the top, but you'll see later on that I will fix that. Not a problem. You could also use maybe some blackboard, I think it's uh, paper, like self-sticking paper. You could use that too. Alright, so I've just threaded this through the hole where the original um, hanger was. And I'm going to make a few knots so this will not slip off. And I actually, it looks like I have three knots there. I used to have the hardest time trying to get the knots to pile on top of each other. I would have like a knot and then I couldn't get close enough to it and later on down the piece of jute I would have another knot but I finally figured it out. 
So we're going to make this a little bit easier so that it doesn't fr <clears throat> excuse me, fray. We're going to go ahead and twist that with a little hot glue. It's going to make almost like a little glue needle on there. You can thread it right through your beads. These are some thrifted beads that came on a garland that I got at um, Goodwill, obviously. And I'm just going to use these on the top of my apple ornament. And we will be attaching this to that little piece of hanger that we had left on there. going to get that in the right placement, tie a few knots, cut it off, and then to keep this from moving around and being distracting, I'm going to pull it down, put a little hot glue on there, and just place it down in the middle. Now I'm going to use this sign as a pretty much a holder. So I'm just going to put the hot glue on there, again place this on the top, try to get it where it looks like it's in the middle. Some of these can be wobbly, but you can just pull them out of the bottom and just use a little hot glue and stick in there. You can get things similar to this, signs with the stand um, at Dollar Tree. So you can definitely do that if you don't have anything at home of, on, you know, that maybe you thrifted. I think the ones that have the, the faux stone, I think it's like an agate or something um, at Dollar Tree. I've seen those and you can use the stand for that. So I'm just going to take a length of ribbon here. I think I have about 14 inches of ribbon and this is just a thrifty piece of gingham. I dovetail the ends. I'm going to push it, squish it up in the middle and then make sure that I have my bow looking good. I'm going to take another piece of that red and tie it around the middle. You can use any color you like based on anything that you have. If you don't have a little apple sign uh, ornament, then you can use a different ornament and then you make your ribbon coordinate with whatever ornament you decide to use. But I thought this would be really cute on a teacher's desk at school. So this is gonna be tied at the base of that paper, the little sign. Just going to tie it on there with a few knots and then I will secure that later with a little hot glue. Trim off what we don't need so it'll be nice and neat and I'm not really that concerned about the sticker on the back of that at this point. I realize I left it. So I decided hey maybe just go ahead and do a second bow and put it on the top. And I think it looks okay. Normally I wouldn't do this, but for some reason I was really, I really like this. It almost looks like it was hanging from the bow. What do you think? Would you have done something different or two bows too much? I don't know. Okay, so there's the gap that I was talking about. Just gonna add some hot glue and I'm gonna add some of these little um, clamps from the Dollar Tree. I love these clamps. I use them all the time and see there, it's all sealed off. And then once it's had time to cool off, then you can take the clamps off. Now it won't slide up and down on that leg. I'm going to remove this little clip here. And I'm going to show you a couple of different things that you can do with this sign. Okay, so we're going to take off our sticker. You could put hot glue chalk on the back of it. You could take some type of a little lightweight cup and put on the back of it. Maybe teacher could put some chalk in there or maybe hide some candy in there, some treats in there. You could add some type of encouraging sticker on there. I'm going to take this cut out of an apple and I'm just going to use a little bit of glue stick on the back and then just smooth it down as much as possible. And then here's where you could choose some type of an encouraging sticker. So start today with a smile. You could put that on there. And this just came from a planner book, a te the teacher's planner book. 
and I got mine at the thrift store, but you can get them at Michael's or Joanne or any place, Hobby Lobby, something like that. But I decided I wanted to use You Got This because teachers need encouragement. It's a hard job. I have a sister who is a teacher. Teaching is hard. Then I just put some little heart stickers on there too. And that's it for this project. What do you think about this? If you were a teacher, is this something that you would enjoy? It makes me smile when I look at it personally. It's very cheery. Okay, on to project number two. And we're going to do an apple wreath. So we're gonna take some little scraps of ribbon. If you've got the ribbon from Dollar Tree, you can use that. Trying to stick to the red and white or red and green theme. This is a little apple box that came from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna use this. And a paintbrush, because we're gonna be doing some painting. I like a flat brush for my painting. And then we have some deco art paint. These I got from the thrift store. These are very inexpensive if you get them at um, the Dollar Tree or if you get them at Walmart. Then I'm gonna take some antiquing wax. These came from Target originally and I got them at Dirt Cheap. I think I paid like 10 cents for these last year. I'm going to take a thrift design, brown on one side and then it's got some scratchy white stuff where I peeled off a sticker before that was on there. And then I'm gonna just take this wreath. And this is a 14 inch wreath. I'm gonna measure it for you here. Doesn't really matter if you use the ones that look more wooden or whatever kind you wanna use. So we're gonna start by taking this apart because I actually need two apples. I have seen people take these apart by hand and apparently I'm very weak because I could not get these suckers apart. So I just took my little cutter here, went along the blue lines with it, tried to weaken the box a little bit, finally took a saw, scored lines in both sides next to the apple, and then pulled them apart. Man, that was a workout. But it was worth it because now I have two little apple pieces to work with. And I have some other scraps too. That's a lot for a dollar, isn't it? You get a lot out of that. I'm just gonna sand it down because there is some glue marks here and a little splintering from the wood that was attached to it. Just a little bit to keep myself safe, but we're actually gonna paint on the other side that is already smooth and ready to go. So there we are, we have two apples and they're mirrored. See how the leaves are? They're mirrored. So what I'm gonna do is just smooth down my sides really well. I don't want any rough edges, I want this to look smooth. I want it to have a nice appearance once we get the paint on here. So it's just pretty much cleaning it up a little. Look at all the fallout from that sanding block. They don't normally do that, but I've had it for a while. So I have Christmas green, I have another type of green, and then I have Christmas red. The Christmas green is actually darker than this other green that I'm using, but I wanted a kind of a brighter green for the apple. Okay, so you've seen people paint, you know how to do this. Go all the way around it. Top, bottom, side to side. I just love a flat bristle brush, but you can use whatever you like on yours. And then I'm going to color one green and one is going to be red and I'm leaving a little spot up top because I wanna be able to draw on where I want my leaf to be, which is what I'm doing now. And I don't wanna get paint on that area. I don't wanna add any red to that spot. Then I'm gonna to go to my sticker here and this is, these are wood stickers. And I'm going to color this one red. And then I'll grab that same green, paint my leaves that pretty green. I love to paint. And again, this is a, a flat brush, bristle brush, love it. And then I'm going to use some of that antiquing wax to draw my stem. Back over to this apple once it's a little bit easier to move around because it's dried a little bit more. I'm just trying to make a little more detail how I want my leaf to be and where I want my stem to be. 
Now I'm using that same green there, but on this apple, I'm going to take that darker green, which is the Christmas green, so that you can see the difference between the apple and the green leaf. So that's what I've done there. Then I'm gonna take the antiquing wax again and use that for my stems. I'm gonna set them aside, let them dry. And while they are drying, we're gonna work on the wreath. Choose what ribbon that you like. They are wired ribbons, but it doesn't matter for this part. Whatever you like that matches with your apples, go with that. This is so simple. We're just going to glue down this ribbon, any part of this wreath, it doesn't matter where you start, but this will be the back though. So just know that you want these pieces on the back, not in the front. This is now the back of our wreath. Then you're just going to take that spool of ribbon and just wind it back and forth, round and around, leaving about the same amount of distance between each run of your ribbon. It'll give her it'll give it a nicer look. It'll look more intentional. Okay, so you're gonna do that all the way around. And then once you get back to the starting place, you're gonna go ahead and trim it and glue it down. Again, making sure that you trim it and glue it down on the back side, which is the side that we're looking at right now, so you don't see any rough edges on your front. Right there. Just double check in to make sure my ribbons look good. I'm gonna lay it back down and secure it. Always, always careful, careful, careful of your fingertips. Protect them. Mine came from the Dollar Tree in the craft section, and you can certainly get some of those for yourself. Now I'm just making sure that my ribbon is where I want it to be, and there were a couple of little pieces that were poking out, and I'm just using my ribbons to secure those pieces of vine or what have you down. Now, part of my footage is missing, so I'm going to quickly run through what it is I'm doing. I'm trying to get a block so that I have a 3D form off of that tag. I'm getting an idea of what I need and I'm peeling off the enamel part of this from the wood. I have a red and white piece of, I think this is a placemat, and I'm just going to glue down on the back, just like this, to make a rectangle that is covered with fabric. Then I will take my scissors and cut that out. Once I cut it out, I'm going to take my letters, I'm just showing you as an example with the numbers, and I'm going to put out apple picking, and I'm going to put my apple over there on the side. I'm showing you here that I'm lining these up just to make sure everything fits and looks nice together. Stay with me now, because we got some missing footage we're working around. I'm going to take two of these stems that I cut from the thrift store. I'm just going to bend the ends to carve along with the shape of a wreath. And this is a different wreath. Same concept. You're just going to stick those down in the weave of the wreath or underneath the ribbon. I'm not going to hot glue mine, but you can certainly do that. I'm going to use some floral wire to wire the top down to the wreath. You're not going to see that part. I'm going to add two little pieces of that greenery right into the top. And then we're going to start working on the bow next. Right in the middle of the top. I'm going to take some of that gingham ribbon and I'm going to start making some loops here. I've got about 10 inches of ribbon so we're going to make big folded over loops, which are gonna give us about five on each. Gonna clip that in the middle, and then I'm going to take my other, and what I was using was the polka dot, but we're gonna use this just for an example. You're gonna fold it over on itself so that you have two loops on each side. And then, so you can see here, there's two on that side, two on that side. Pinching it up in the middle, and gonna put the gingham right on top. Once you get those together, you can get your zip tie, put it right around the middle, 
and cinch it off. And you need to do it pretty tightly because you're going to be tugging at that bow to get those layers apart. It's a little more difficult when you have a smaller bow like this to get your layers to come apart, um, each of those little folds in the ribbon. So just be sure that you get that on there really tight and then you can trim it off. We want the opening part to be in the back. Then start fluffing out your bow. And this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have four little loops of each color or each style of ribbon on each side. Then you're going to cut off and dovetail your ends. You could have already cut it off if you know if you needed to do that. Because this is just going to be a short stout little bow. You can definitely make a larger bow if that's something that interests you. If you think that that looks good you can certainly do that. My videos are for inspiration. You don't have to use the same colors. You don't have to use the same anything really. It's just to give you some idea of what you would like. So you're going to just pull that apart and then you're going to cut those ends up and I will let you know that also you are going to be missing the part where I glue the two layers of the sign together which is the fabric covered part of the sign to that metal tag sign and then wire it down to the wreath. and then add some little beads to the top of it and you'll see that in just a moment. So there we go. Now here's the finished project. This is the original footage. I just glued down the fabric part onto the metal sign with hot glue and I used some red beads to go on the top just in the pattern on top of little white um, sections of that plaid. And there is our finished wreath. Again, I apologize. I don't know what happened to the footage. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, project number three. This is our caramel apple sign. This is going to be either a sign that you can use just freestanding on any shelf anywhere in your house or you can use it on your coffee bar. It's definitely too big for a tear tray. So we're going to take some jute a sign of your choice. It needs to be something thick that can sit securely on a shelf, some scraps of ribbon, and some red beads. So I'm going to start by taking my sanding block and going around this wood cutout that I have. This um, was originally from Target and so was the block sign that's underneath it. I got it at Dirt Cheap. We're just going to sand down the edges to give it more of a rustic look. Please excuse my children yelling in the background. They are home with me today. My husband is gone. He's in a meeting. Okay, so I want to do the same thing with this one. I'm just going to go around the edges and give it that white look, that worn look. As you know, my house has a kind of a rustic style, so I like to keep everything looking kind of vintagey and comfortable and worn. So we're going to wipe all the dust off. Make it nice and pretty and clean. Then we're going to start layering this up. So in order for that glue to get good bite onto that wood, I'm going to just take my sanding block and take some of that shiny paint off of there. Just running it back and forth. And now I have a better surface to put some glue on. I'm going to use a little bit of wood glue on each side, each of those high spots. And then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue. So we have long-term, strong hold, and a quick fix. Right there together. Try not to mix my glues up. Then I'm just going to turn this over and center it down on the top of the block. You can find cutouts at Dollar Tree as well. I don't know if they have apples yet, but you can certainly um, look for those in the fall section. You might find something. I'm just using this piece of wood cut out underneath just to stabilize this until the glue is dry so that I continue to work on the project. 
Now I'm going to see what I want to do to embellish the top because I know I want to do something to this apple. Do I want to add some jute? Do I want to add some ribbon? How about we add a little bit of both? So I'm going to take this ribbon on the top and just hot glue it down. You can certainly make your ribbon long enough so that it goes all the way around, but I don't intend to have this sitting where you can see the back side. So just glue it down there, and then you can go ahead and layer up some jute or just use one solid color, whatever you choose to do. And I'm gonna put this around the middle. Hot glue it, then protect your fingers, and then trim it up, and start wrapping that around. I don't have a particular way I want this wrapped. I'm just gonna go round and round, kind of crossing over here and there. Do whatever is best for you, whatever you like, and then we're gonna finish it off with a little hot glue to hold it in place. I love these little fingertip protectors. They work so well. And they did come from Dollar Tree. So now I've decided that I wanna make a little coordinating leaf to go over there on the top. So I'm just gonna trim this off, take the wire off, I'm gonna fold it in half, and then make sort of an oval shape. A leaf shape. So I'm just gonna do what in my mind would be a leaf shape. And then I'm going to glue that on the top. I'm just using a little bit of that extra glue that I already had on the brush instead of using the hot glue. Look at this, isn't this cute? This is a thrifted item that I used and re refinished it and made it into a little spool holder so I can use it for my jute. Comes out nice and neat and I don't have to worry about it making a mess. Okay, so now we're gonna make a tassel. So I'm gonna go around my hand. I think I go around there about 10, 12 times. You'll have to count that. You may wanna watch it back so that we can make a tassel. Now, I'm gonna loop right through my loop and I'm gonna give that a few ties down, a few knots. Okay, then I'm gonna pull it down and pinch it into the shape that it needs to be. I'm gonna cut the length of my tassel and I'm gonna use another piece of jute to tie a knot about a half an inch down from where the top is. I'm gonna tie that tightly. And then just begin to wrap it around and around and around. It's gonna form the top or the head of that tassel gonna glue it down you could tie it off if you would rather do it that way and then we're gonna take our scissors through the loops and just cut those loops off be sure your glue is dry so you don't pull anything loose when you go to this part you want to pull these down on the bottom kind of brush them down with your fingers and then trim it off so that everything's nice and neat on the bottom you can curve it or cut it straight across whichever you prefer we're going to embellish this, so we're going to need a point to put beads on. A little hot glue, twist it on the end of that, made us a little piece of a, I guess like a thread guide, and we're going to put it through there. These slide in here so easy this way, I really recommend this technique, and it's quicker than wrapping glue um, tape around it, excuse me. So I just want to see how long I want to make this. And I'm just gonna add my beads to where I like it. And then I'm gonna tie it off so my beads don't slide around. I'm gonna put a couple of knots in there to make sure that it doesn't slip back through the hole in the beads. You see how it still slips through with one? But if you tie it again and you slip another knot on top, see how it, that works? It's bigger than the hole and it won't slide out. So now we're gonna go through the top of the apple, right in that little hole. 
and then we're going to tie it down to the jute that's already there. Simply put a knot or two in there and that'll hold it. And if you prefer, you can just glue it on, whichever way. I'm giving you some options. Trim that off. And then I'm gonna trim off a little, I had a little extra there on my loop that needed to come off. So now I'm gonna flare it out and see if this is how I like it. You can certainly leave it down. You can do it off to the side like this and then fix it with a little hot glue, have it in the center, or you can put it across the top. And I think that's how I like it. So I'm gonna add some hot glue here and just let this embellish the top of my apple. It's a little bit of a different look, but I think it's pretty. What do you think? Now we're gonna make just a little bow to go on the top. I'm gonna use two strands of my jute like this and just make a very simple little bow to go on the top. There's enough going on with all the extra the tassel and the polka dots that I don't need anything fancy so I think this is the perfect little way to embellish it and it'll cover up that hole. Trim it off the way you want it, add a little hot glue and put it right down on top of where the hole is and that is that. Now because we have the white in the sign below I felt like it needed you know just a little more little more white in the top of it. So I'm just going to trim off this little bow. We made it the same way, just with one strand, and then stick that down. And I think that that looks a little bit better. So what do you think about these three projects? Do you like any of these, and will you be trying any of these? If so, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs and crafting, then I would appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I promise to do my best to bring you affordable decor that you can make for your home. And as always, I like to leave you inspiration and bring you a little joy. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you again real soon. Bye. Today we'll be doing a wreath and a centerpiece with copper. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. I'll start with a textured thrifted pumpkin. We're gonna change them a bit. I'm gonna take this Deco Art Worn Penny Paint, my favorite paintbrush. We're gonna need some floral foam and something to put our arrangement on. This will be our centerpiece. It needs to be cleaned first, so I'm gonna give it a good wipe down and then take a fresh paper towel and dry every bit of it off. If it's not dry, the glue will not stick. And we want it to stay in place. Okay, so now we're gonna work on this pumpkin. We're gonna put, protect our surface here, shake that paint up really well because it will almost separates like oil and water. Put some of it in the dish. I did not put enough in there, but it's better to use a little and add it than to use, just to waste a bunch of paint. So I'm just gonna load my brush up with paint and start putting it on the pumpkin. This video is a little more laid back. It's got a little more a little less editing cuts as far as taking out stuff and skipping ahead and I've just put it on fast forward so you can kind of see a little bit more of what I'm doing. So I'm laying the paint on from that brush. I'm running the brush back and forth because there's paint on both sides and all in the center of the bristles. This is very textured so it takes quite a bit to get in all of the cracks and grooves. That's what you see me doing here. I always save the bottom for last that way I don't have paint stuck on the bottom, stuck on the paper, and then every time I move my project, the paper comes up with it and makes just a big mess. So now we're working on the bottom. Same thing here, no need to waste paint in the center because you're not going to see that. Okay, 
this pumpkin is going to take two coats of paint. So I'm gonna put it aside, put it in front of my fan and dry it. That's how I dry my things. I use a standing fan. I put it on a special protected surface against the wall and I put it on high. While that is drying, we're gonna put our foam in the dish. Now you can see there that it is sunken down and we need to raise it up. So I'm going to take another piece of this foam. This is just a piece of scrap foam that probably came from an Amazon box, to be honest. I'm just gonna load that sucker down with some paint, I mean some glue, and then I'm going to put some glue on the top as well. You want to make sure that this part doesn't move around because you're going to be tugging around on this, poking it, maneuvering it, shove it from side to side with your, with your picks, you know, your greenery and your floral, and you don't want it to come loose. Okay, so now we're going to start on the next project. This is our bicycle wheel that came from Dollar Tree. Right now it is black. We're going to take our metallic copper paint outside and give it a good coat. I only used one coat, but I mean, I really sprayed it down good. Here is two coats of that paint on the pumpkin. We're gonna let that wheel dry while we work on our arrangement. Okay, if you want something quick and simple, here it is. Pitberry garland rolled up, there you go. But if you wanna do it like me, pick some berries and stems and leaves that coordinate well with your copper pumpkin and with the decor you're already using in your home. And for me, it was these oak leaves, and these leaves actually came out of, I think it was a Big Lots wreath from many, many, many years ago. I've always loved the colors, and I've used them in so many different projects. And the good thing about this is they still have the little picks in there. Now, they aren't the strongest picks, so you will see them bend a little bit, just like that. But that is not a problem. I'm just going to keep working with it. If you don't like that and you get maybe some leaves that are bending on you, just get some of those florist picks. Um, you can get the ones that are wooden, like a large toothpick on the bottom, and they have the wire on the top. And you can just wrap it around the part of the stem that you do have and make your own picks. And that will make it probably a little bit quicker and easier for you once you get to this part. Okay, so I'm going to start with putting four out. I'm going to put in them, put them kind of like the corners of a square. I'll put them on the bottom flat against the sides of that bowl so they're laying straight down. The next layer is going to be one in between each of those, more of like a 45 degree angle. So we're starting to come up a little bit. You don't want to put anything straight up because the center is where you want to set your pumpkin and you want to have space. I do check that several times while I'm doing my project to make sure that my pumpkin still has room to sit flat down on that disc, on the foam disc. These are thrifted branches that I found and they, I don't know if they are berries or pomegranates. I'm not sure what they are, but they almost have like a copper, oh, I don't know, almost a coppery color to them. And I like that. I think it's very rustic looking, very cottagey looking, so. It fits for what I'm working with. You can also get branches and little pomegranate branches at Dollar Tree. You can use any type of thrifted branch that you like. These colors are matching with what I like. Use whatever colors you like. I know blue looks really nice with copper also. Uh, browns look good. Burgundy, anything really looks good with copper. It's a metal, so you can pretty much do whatever your heart desires. Now with the picks that I use, there's, it's so much on it. They're such good quality picks that you can really use every single bit. And you will also see me use the bottoms that you don't normally use in decorations with Dollar Tree picks. In other words, they look like a real piece of wood or a real branch. Once you cut the leaves and the berries off, they still look like a branch. And I do use that in this project. So you'll see me do that. If you get a better quality floral, you'll be able to use even more of it. So sometimes it's worth it just to pay a little bit more. Maybe get your items on clearance after the holidays and save them for the next year. 
um, things like that. Use coupons where you can. I know certain stores like Joann's and Michael's will let you use coupons, so those are ways to save money to get some quality florals. Okay, so you can see this is filling out nicely, and my pumpkin still has a little place to rest right in the middle. I move my items around when I am decorating them. I turn them from side to side. I look above them. I look, you know, like eyeball surface to check and make sure that I don't have gaps or problems or too much of one thing in one area. So that's what you see me doing now. Turn it around. If you have a turntable, set your item on the turntable or the little um, Lazy Susan and just turn it around. Then you can add in all little bits and picks. See, there's that stem. I'm going to add right here to the side. Here's another one. Put those wherever you want, wherever they, you know, it looks like it feels right to you. It's nature, so nothing's perfect. And then, yeah, just like that. Do what feels right. Going to keep turning that around. I'm going to keep playing around with my greenery, adding in spots. Um, you can see there on the bottom kind of right corner that it needs a little something extra so I'm fluffing about a bit and may add another piece or two there and this is how it is looking so far so I'm happy so far I'm gonna take that bottom and use some hot glue I don't want to destroy my pumpkin it's not foam it's more like a, a hollow resin type thing I want to press that down and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere and then just hold the top while I'm looking at it um, so that the glue doesn't come apart and it doesn't fall over. You can see I'm holding that stem. And I like that stem the way it is. I didn't want to paint that. That was intentional. Okay, so now here is our copper bicycle wheel. All fixed up. I only did the front because no one's going to see the back. I'm trying to be stingy with my paints. Here's some more of those picks. These are some thrifted picks. They are maybe grapevine I'm not sure but they came off of another wreath that I picked apart as well love doing that if you're at a thrift store and you just think to yourself gosh I really don't need another wreath but I love the greenery buy it anyway it doesn't cost much you can take it apart you can use your greenery on another project and you can use a wreath for something else it's perfect two for one right okay so we're gonna do zip ties instead of using wire this time it saves me a little bit of time. I have an abundance of zip ties, so this is what I'm going to do. This is not going to be completely covered. It's going to be more like three quarters in greenery. And then you're going to be able to still see part of the wheel, which I like. And you can see there's a little part there where it was still attached to the wreath that it was on. So I'm just going to cut that off and get it off of there. And now I'm going to choose the next little one. I chose the top one because it had berries in it. This little piece does not have any berries in it. I want to keep it balanced so I am paying attention to that type of thing. So I'm just going to lay this over the wire from the other pick. And then I'm going to take this one, kind of curve the branches a little bit, make sure that's what I want. And I do like that one. So I'm going to zip tie that on. It's overlaying that branch that's underneath it as well. Okay, and when you turn it over, you can also add wire or some more of these zip ties anywhere along the way that you see to keep it in the curve, to keep it a round, a more formed wreath. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now we're going to add it the other direction and we're going to leave a gap in the middle because we're going to do something different there. So I'm just pushing that down. This one has some berries in it. I'm going to turn it and then secure the back side. This particular pick was a little bit larger than the other, the ones I had on the other side. So it kind of stands on its own pretty well, but we're going to add another one to it. Okay. So now when it's hanging, this is how it is going to look. You can see that it's on, it's like three quarters covered and then that top, um, say 12 o'clock to three o'clock is going to be open. There'll be nothing there. Now I'm pulling those out. They are on wires. 
so I can pull them apart and fluff them up and make them look nice. Gonna make them stand out a little bit more. Like a pretty fluffy leaf pile. Now we're gonna work on this section. We are going to make a funky bow. So I'm gonna choose a variety of beautiful ribbon. This one came from Dollar Tree. This orange, like a burnt orange, it came from Dollar Tree. These coordinate nicely with these colors. This is a thrifted piece of ribbon. It's like a silk on wire. So this is going to be with it. And then you'll see me adding some more on shortly. So what I'm doing is taking about 18 inches of the ribbon and I'm gonna fold it in half and start making me a pile down there. 18 inches of each one of those, laying them down. You can make it longer, you can do two feet, you can do, you know, however big you want your bow to be. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So I'm gonna use a couple of different ones. I ran out of my plaid, so I had to actually just use one of those, but I'm gonna fill in with something else. And then this is some more thrifted, I love this one, um, thrifted wired ribbon. It's all wired and that's very important for this type of a bow. So you're going to hold your bow up. You're going to go down about four inches. You want your tail to be longer than the bow. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here. I'm pinching it up. I'm going to hold it in the crook of my fingers between my first finger and my thumb. We're going to do the same thing. I'm measuring it against the bow that's right beside it or the loop that's beside it. So we have the same measurement. You're going to do this, pinching it and then tightly holding it in the crook of your hand there. You can see all these loops will be the same size. You're going to grab your pieces up like this. You're gonna pinch them into your hand. I'm just measuring, you can see what's going on here. All the tails are hanging below. Gonna go on to my next color. And you're gonna add all your pieces in this exact same way. Kind of separate the ones that are similar you know you want to leave you want to space them out a little bit you're going to have more freedom to move it around in a bit but when you're initially doing it kind of space them away from each other so here you go you almost have a little balloon bouquet in your hand you're going to take your zip tie and without letting go of your bow see what i did there i crossed it right across my hand and then i'm going to cinch my bow now i'm not going to do this completely tight until I check and check again to make sure that these are the same height. What I've done is just cinched them up enough to hold them together while I move them around. Then I'm gonna tighten them up. So what I just did there was tighten, tighten, tighten as tight as you can get it, and then cut off your excess, okay? Now when you first start doing this, you're gonna think, what have I done? I've just wasted all of this ribbon. But no, give it time. This bow takes time and fluffing. See, I'm pulling all the tails out and apart, out and apart, like an octopus. The loops on the top are the octopus head, and all of these are the legs that are spreading out underneath it. You see? Flip it over, pull them apart. Separate your patterns, separate your colors. You can do that because this is wired ribbon. So you're going to pull, twist, fluff, and keep working on your bow. Get those pieces where you want them and fluff them. You can twist. If your pattern is underneath, twist it and it will stay. Good quality ribbon counts a lot. Um, sometimes the ribbon that you get at Dollar Tree is not very sturdy and it won't hold. You have to really fuss with it. But some of it's really good, like this orange and this burlap. This stuff is some great ribbon. I have used it for years and it has never let me down. So keep doing that. You want to dovetail all of your ends and then I will show you how you can just kind of curl those. If you put them between your first and second finger, I mean your, yeah, well, your pointer and your middle finger, there you go, and you run it down the ribbon, you will put a bend in the wire, like an even bend so it will arch it up. Or see here how I did that? There you go. Or you can just bend it with your fingers. Just walk down it with your fingers and curl it under. That's what you do. You wanna curl each one of those little ends under, and then you can trim it where you need to trim it. Um, 
and it's gonna look nice for you. Now this part, part is optional, um, but this is how I attach this type of a ribbon to my arrangements. I'm gonna take a piece of thin floral wire. It needs to be sturdy enough that it won't, you know, that you can feed it through the ribbon. And you're gonna just feed it through a couple of the ones that are, that you can reach in the center there. So I'm just going in a circular motion, going through the ribbons on the bottom. You can see there. Then I'm gonna pull them up so that I have two, I have the little, see there? Little hanger holders, little free wires. I'm gonna give it an initial twist or two, then I'm gonna flip it over and just wrap it around the wire on the back of the wreath. Now you may think, okay, you just turned that upside down and squished it and now you gotta refluff it. Well, yeah, you do. You do have to refluff it. But I want you to know in crafting, one of my favorite things to do is fluff a bow. It's not for everybody, but I love it. I love seeing a transformation. Look at that bow. That bow is the perfect bow for this arrangement. But I'm missing the fact that my plaid ribbon there is just, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna add some more plaid. So I'm gonna take a curtain hanger, or this may be a shower curtain hook, who knows. I'm gonna take the hanger part off, take my copper paint, and I'm going to spray paint this ring copper. While it's drying, I'm adding some more of that plaid ribbon. I had a tiny bit left. It wasn't long enough to put it in the initial bow, but it's enough to add some more tails. So I'm gonna dovetail it, fold it in half into a V, and I'm gonna place it right there. And I'm gonna leave the tails a little bit longer than the rest of it, because I really, really love that ribbon. Okay, see there? Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. Okay, so here's some faux leather ribbon. It is a brownish color. It's the only one I've been able to find at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna add it to this ring to make a hanger. I've seen these on items um, at craft stores. And I thought, you know, I can definitely do that myself and show you guys how to do it so that we get a more high-end look without paying $50, $60 for it. I mean, how much would you pay for this wreath if you saw this? And don't you think something that is this quality could be found in a craft store or a deck, you know, a home decor store? Definitely. I could definitely see this hanging in Kirkland's or, you know, someplace like that, an at-home store. So you're just going to feed this through the top, pinch it down. You can protect your fingers. You always should. I just didn't because this is really thick and I didn't need to for this. I didn't feel. I'm going to add some here to, to secure my ring. See, they're saving the paint. It was still silver on the back. And there we go. Look at that. All right, I want to add right here just a little pumpkin. I felt like it needed a little more of a reminder of fall coming up. I'm going to put that partly on the ribbon and partly on the frame and on the leaves that are underneath it and press it down. And there we go. All right, our two projects are complete. And this is what we have. What do you think about these? Is this something that you would buy and have in your home? I love the look of these. These are gonna be great in my own home. And I hope that this is something that has inspired you to do something with some Dollar Tree items for your home. That wheel is amazing. I wish I would have gotten more, but I was trying to not be stingy. I wanted to share with everybody else who wanted them. Hmm, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Today I have three fall decor DIYs that are rustic and cottage core. Keep watching! I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. Welcome! So, for project number one, I'm using paint stirs, nine of them. My challenge was to use paint stirs by the Crafting Cousins. Now what I'm doing is making a fence, or I'm making a gate, like a garden gate. So I'm using these paint stirs, and I'm marking those down to give it the look of a gate or a fence panel. Just using my pencil and marking those on there, and then you can use whatever cutting device you want to use. My wood does split a little bit cutting it this way, but it goes right back together, and you can't even tell that it has any damage. 
So I'm going to clean up my edges as much as possible and then I'm going to use my sanding block to just smooth out any of the little splintered ends. You're just going to rub it back and forth and just kind of rock it side to side to round the corners just a little bit. Perfect. I'm going to do the same thing with this one because these are our supports. One is going to go on the top to cover up the little grooves and then one of course on the bottom just like you would see if you were walking down the road in the country and you see a little picket fence beside you. So I'm just going to use my little sanding block here to clean that up. This is a sanding block that I've had for quite some time that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's a very affordable tool for you to use to add to your crafting toolkit. Today I am very happy to be joining the Fab Five Friend Collab and this is hosted by the crafting cousins Trish and Kay and they have invited five friends to come and challenge each other with items to make crafts with. So as I said before I was challenged by the crafting cousins and then you will look in the box below and you'll see the one that I challenged. So be sure you watch everybody's videos and comment. All right, I'm going to take some wipes now and some of my antiquing wax and I'm going to stain each one of these. You can leave it bare if you like that color, but I wanted to make mine look a little bit darker. You could even paint these white if you like farmhouse or if you want a white picket fence. This is real easy to do. You don't have to use a paintbrush. You just go around your planks. I'm gonna do all the sides and the ends as well. And then, so we got our support pieces done. Now we're gonna do each one of our little pickets. Gonna keep turning that cloth and then add some more if you need to add some more, just like I'm doing. Rub it in really good so you don't have um, a chunk of paint in one spot. You wanna have even distribution of your color. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just initially laying it on each one of these. You can see it really brings out the texture in that wood. So I like that. I like a rustic look and to see that in that wood just really brings my heart a little bit of joy. It's the simple things, right? It is the simple things. Okay, once they are dry, this is how they look. They will lighten up just a little bit. And we're going to reassemble our fence or our gate to look like so. Simple. I'm gonna use a little bit of wood glue and just a little stick that I have over here. This is just a little crafting um, little piece of wood. And I'm gonna decide exactly where I wanna put it and then how I'm gonna put it down. So I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna start off by using some popsicle sticks to secure the back down. So here we go, tongue depressors, popsicle sticks. You can use whatever size that you have as long as they don't extend the sides and show. You don't want them to show. I'm gonna use a little hot glue here cover these up. Now it doesn't go all the way down to the last plank but that won't matter because we're going to overlap it. Again this is the back nobody's going to see it. It's going to be ideally against a wall but if it's something that you wanted to hang maybe on a glass door or something like that you might consider covering this with some craft paper so you don't see all of the hardware that we're putting on the back to hold it together. And this works really well, I have found. Um, this is not something that I would put outside by any means, so you don't have to worry about the humidity, maybe making your glue break away and your project fall apart. This works for me. Okay, so now it is together very nicely, very securely. We've got it flipped over, now is when we're gonna use our wood glue. We're gonna use a little wood glue for a long, sturdy fix, and we're gonna use a little bit of hot glue on there also to make it work quickly. You can certainly just use the hot glue if you don't want to use, you know, if you don't want to, to fool with this, or you could just use the wood glue and clamp it down and let it dry. I just have fun alternating. So little here, little here. Put the hot glue down last because it dries fastest. There we go. That can be clamped in place, especially if you have one of those planks that wants to kind of bow out. Um, I ordered mine my paint stirs from 
Amazon and a large pack. I'll put that link below for you so you can find some. Very affordable and I still have lots and lots and lots of sticks for more projects. Okay, just a little bit here and there. You can see now I've made a mess down there. There's a piece of hair or some fibers or something stuck in there. Not a worry, you're not gonna see it. We're not gonna sweat the small stuff. There you go, bam, covered up. And a little clamp here and a little clamp there. Those clamps came from Dollar Tree as well. Just wanna make sure that nothing is bowing out in a way. Look at these cool things. These are really good weights to hold things um, flat, and I love to use them in my projects. Plus, they're pretty to look at. I think they're electricity insulators. Tell me what you think they are. I think that's what they are. Okay, now we're gonna pretty it up. Look at these gorgeous gold pieces of greenery. Or would we call those goldery? They're gonna go up top. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to it because I love orange and rust colors in the fall. A little thrifted pumpkin and this thrifted sign. The sign probably came from Hobby Lobby, something like that maybe. And I'm just trying to decide what I want to go on the top, which pumpkins I wanna use. You do the same thing and choose whatever you like. I'm gonna use a piece of this garland from Dollar Tree and just pick off the ones that match. You can see here that I'm looking to see what colors I want to use. I'm gonna take the hardware off the back of this little box sign because if you leave it on there, it won't lay flush against your little gate or fence. And we wanna be sure that that glue has nice flat surfaces to adhere to so they don't come apart. I'm gonna go around the edge of this black to just make it, give it a little worn look here. Again, I like rustic. If you don't like to do that, you certainly don't have to. You can skip that step. I'm gonna add some hot glue on the borders here on the back. Dollar Tree has beautiful little box signs like this that you could certainly use. Something, you could use something thrifted or maybe something you used last year. You can repurpose it. Okay, so these greenery pieces, or goldery pieces, they are on wire and they're easily flexed into the position that we like. You do not have to leave your, your picks in the way that they came from the store. You can bend them. Bend them and flex them to your desired result. So this is so simple. I'm gonna put one gold on one side, one on the other, other. One orange on one side, one on the other. And then I'm just gonna use a little tie here to tie it off. You can use a pipe cleaner, you can use wire, you can use whatever you like to go in the center of yours. Clip off your excess. And there's the start of your swag for the top of this little garden gate or fence piece. Here I am cutting off, and really honestly, this is so thin, the plastic that holds it on, you could probably just pull these off. But I cut them off, and I'm gonna be using these to layer underneath and around it. You can put a couple of pieces together here and there. I do this a lot on my projects, kind of layering the greenery. That's easy. So we're going to start by going to the top and we're going to glue that down. A clamp is going to be your best friend in the circumstance because your wires will try to flex away from your surface and you want that glue to have a chance to harden before you move away from that part. Now there's some glue under there, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And don't glue your clamp down. I'm gonna add my greenery over there. Same thing, it's mirrored. What you do on one side, you do on the other. This is like the simplest swag ever. And I'm gonna take this cute little pumpkin and my craft knife, and I'm going to shave about mm, a third of it off so that it will lay flat against my project. Very easy. I just kept cutting away on this thing. Okay, then you're gonna add some glue and 
press this down on there. I'm going to press it into my leaves and in the little space that is between the leaves on the board so that nothing is loose and flying away. For these little white pumpkins, I didn't have any picks and I'm going to make some out of some leftover greenery stems that I had. They were brown, so I thought they would work. That's all there is to it. Now our pumpkins have little stems. I have some extra little bits of this. Um, I don't know if you would call this like seeded grass, maybe. I'm just going to add those pieces in there, here and there. Once is never enough for me. If you've watched my videos, you know I'm constantly going back and adding things here and there. I like to do what feels right, so I just keep kind of fooling with it. I kind of go off into my own little zone and keep working until something just feels right. And then I'll know it's complete. I found some acorns in my stash, so I'm going to add those. I think this is going to fit nicely into a rustic home. Maybe a little bit cottagey, maybe a little bit farmhousey. And I would almost say with the gold on there, maybe a little bit rustic glam. What do you think? Could this pass as rustic glam? It might. Okay, so I've just added that other little pumpkin and because now there's a space, I'm gonna add one more leaf just to fill it in. I don't wanna cover up my words because the sign is really pretty. It's got gold accents and gold writing. It's really pretty. Okay, so, so far the swag is looking good. Now I wanna add one more thing. Look what I found at the thrift store. It's a tiny spindle. I don't know what it came from, but it was all by itself. And then I thought, hey, I bet some of these wood beads I have will fit. And look there, they fit perfectly. And they hold that up away from the little piece of wood or tongue depressor or a paint stirrer underneath there. So there's a little gap. You can make a ribbon bow. You could put a little tea towel. You could put anything right there. What do you think about this project? Oh my gosh, I'm so tickled with this. You're gonna wanna flip it over and put any type of hanger of your choice on the back. Project number two. Gonna use this scrap piece of wood I have here. This is like a, looks like a piece of spindle. Maybe somebody was working with and didn't finish using it. Doesn't have any hardware attached to it. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here. I might have had a little too much fun playing with the glue. Do y'all remember school paste? It came in the little jar and it had the, the brush on it. Yeah, I liked playing with glue. Okay, so look at that beautiful design. Okay, so I'm gonna use this Christmas tree ornament and it's going to go right on top. I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue quickly in between all that wood glue. And I'm going to flip it over and glue it down so that it is relatively in the center of that little ornament. It's a wood slice. This is going to be a cute little rustic piece. And here I have a little piece of thin wood disc. It's just a circle like a cutout. And I have some floral foam scraps. A candle. I do not suggest you using a wax candle like I have. I'm not going to use it for this project. I'm going to remove it, but for the time being, it's going to hold a place so that you know, you get an idea of what we're doing. But please, 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 do not use a candle that you light. Use a flameless candle here. Okay, I'm gonna cut off little pieces of this floral foam and hot glue them down in a circle around this candle. Easy, easy. I don't recommend this particular type of floral foam because it is very messy. You can always use some other type of foam and just cut it into pieces so that you get uh, some type of a foam surrounding that you can add your greenery to. I have some thrifted greenery here, all kinds of eucalyptus. And so I have this bluish green in the eucalyptus. I have some orange and yellow leaves. And then I have some eucalyptus that I got from Dollar Tree, which I love. And I did buy some more of that. And it's that greenish rusty color. 
and then I think I have some little floral picks from Dollar Tree as well. So I'm going to start by laying out my base. This is going to be pretty much level with the tabletop. You want to go to the bottom, right, right where the disc is, and start putting a circular pattern around the bottom. I like to work from the bottom upward. So that's what I'm doing here. You see what I mean? It's so flaky. The foam is so flaky that it kind of comes off. But, you know, you can always glue it back down. No problem. Now, I'm going to keep working in a circular pattern with my greenery. There is something about that green with that orange and gold that just, it does it for me. It's screaming fall for me this year. Really, really, really like that. Trim your branches down if you need to. Make them the right length. This is going to be kind of short and stout. This little candelabra, I guess you could call it. Or a candle stand. Whatever you want to call this. Then I'm just going to start adding in the eucalyptus. Working in fours so far is all I'm doing here. And then I'm going to go in the spaces on the bottom and work in fours also. Adding in whatever I have. I'm cutting down my floral picks and adding those in, in the spaces. So you can see there's four there too. Just a pattern of four so far. Trim down what you need to trim and then start adding in whatever you wanna add. Whatever type of greenery you have and you like, just start putting that in there. Now I'm just adding in here and there, whatever I think looks good because I don't have any more of those pretty gold and orange greenery pieces. So I'm just going to add around. I'm just going to fluff them out. And this is what we have. And I'm happy with that. Now it's going to sit on top of this little candle stand. But how are we going to make this stick if we don't glue it down? Well, I've got an idea for that. And I think you're going to like it. We're going to use little velcro dots. I'm going to take three of those and put them around in a triangular pattern, I guess you could say. So I've got the bottoms on, I'm going to push those down and then I'm going to add the tops on top. I'm adding those on top of them so that when we push the, the other layer on it and squish it down really hard, those dots line up exactly where we want them to be. If you would have put the other part of the dots on the bottom of the candle, you never would have matched them up. So there you go. What do you think about that? Okay, for my third and final project, I have a ladder project. Okay, this is going to be like a little, a pumpkin garden ladder. Let's call it that. Right now, you can see me trying to get my placement. And then here, I'm doing the same cutting method as I used before. I'm going to take my sandpaper. I've just overlaid a rougher grit and I'm going to just rock that back and forth and then move it side to side until I get that nice and smooth. See there? I'm going to do that until it is perfectly smooth. I don't want any cut fingers or splinters anywhere. And I want it to look like it was intended to be this way, not like it was a paint stirrer in a previous life. This time we won't be staining or painting it. I'm going to leave it the exact same color that it is. Okay, so we're going to start figuring out where we want the rungs on our ladder. And I'm going to start putting down some glue. A stripe of wood glue, a stripe of hot glue. One for stronghold and one for permanent, well, one for quick hold, let's put it that way. Okay, same here. And we're gonna do this down on the bottom too. I'm out of the camera, so you can't really see what I'm doing on the bottom, but I promise you, I'm going to do that. Clean up if you get any excess glue, like I do all the time. Just get you a little pick or something and just wipe that right off. If you do it while it's still wet, it'll come off and you'll barely notice. Now I'm using these little weights again to hold those down until they get a good grip on each other. So here's our ladder. Cute. Cute little ladder. And I'm gonna use this. This came out of a book that came from Dollar General. Whimsical lettering. 
here is the code and I'm just gonna use I like the happy place sign so I'm gonna make a little sign for this project with this this is an option if you don't have a Cricut if you don't want a freehand lettering and you don't have a printer get one of these cute books I'm going to put this little chalkboard looking sign on this scrap of wood that I already had. Came off another project, probably something from Dollar Tree. And it needs to be cleaned up just a bit. So I'm going to just knock the splinters off the edges here and clean that up. Simple, simple. And then I'm going to decide how I want this. Once I lay it down, I'm just going to bend it so that I know where my borders are going to be. And I know exactly how I want to place it on that piece of wood. Just running a crease down there. Okay. Now you can just take a glue stick, which is what I'm using there on the bottom. There we go. And just covering it side to side and be sure that you get the corners and all the edges really well. Place that down and now you can trim off what you don't want on there or you can use a sanding block and get it off. I'm using my little wallpaper tool to press it down and then you can see how easily it comes off with the sandpaper. You get a nice crisp edge that looks like it was supposed to be there all along. Plus it's going to match up with my other piece, that um, the black sign that I did, the garden gate. It's going to have that same little white edge as the black sign that we did. Okay, so there we go. Now we're going to start making this ladder look like it has been leaned up against the side of a barn and we have some beautiful fall weeds growing up through it. So I'm just going to wrap this around the back of my ladder. I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to take some more pieces of scrap greenery that I have. Here's some more, some little flowers, and then this beautiful pumpkin. Pull him off the pick, and I'm going to start gluing down. Put a little glue across that stem. A little bit of paper will help hold that in place back there, make it look nice and neat. And then, because these are on wires, I'm going to twist these around just like a pumpkin vine grows and clings as it stretches out. That's what I'm going to do with this weed. It's like it's been, the ladder's been there for, since the 40s. And we've got some beautiful greenery growing up through it. You can just twist those around, give them a little hot glue support where it's needed. I'm making a mess. And you just want to um, press that down so that the wire doesn't pull away. And then once it's set up a little bit, then you can move on and twist it another way. And that's what you see me doing here. Just making it look wild and making it look like it would if it was all on its own, lonesome for years. What do you think? Isn't that cute? I love this. And it's very cottagey looking as well, I think, this particular project. Okay. I am so happy to be working with Trish and Kay again. I have worked with them before and they are wonderful, genuine ladies. I appreciate them so much and you are going to love all the videos from all the other creators in the fab five videos plus you have a chance to win one of two cards who doesn't need a gift card right you could use a gift card an amazon gift card to start your christmas shopping you could use it to buy craft supplies you could do anything you want because it will be yours but you have to follow those rules so be sure that you refer back to the rules at the beginning of the video all right so i want to put my happy place sign right on the top just going to clamp it down while I continue to work with the rest of it so nothing comes loose. Now I know that I want to use this pumpkin here 
And I think I can use this pumpkin as a stand to hold the ladder up so that it will be freestanding on its own. So you're just gonna see me using my craft knife again or my utility knife. These come in a three pack. You can get them at Dollar Tree. I recommend them, highly recommend them. They slice through just like butter. Foam, foam board, whatever it is you're cutting. Okay, so I've cut out enough room, as you can see there, where the leg of the ladder will fit right through it. And look, it stands on its own. Y'all, Walmart has some really nice pumpkins and gourds out right now too. So if you're not finding what you like at Dollar Tree, Walmart's prices are comparable and the quality is fantastic. Mine, of course, was thrifted. But I've been watching. I've been keeping an eye out for y'all. We want to do affordable, yet high-end looking crafts for our home. I'm gonna add some of these little weedy flowers here and there, adding my greenery here and there. I like to use a variety of greenery so that it does look like it's growing in the wild. I think that's part of the cottage aesthetic to make it look like, you know, you're walking out in a garden, you're walking out on a country road and you're seeing all the beauty. And we don't want things just growing straight up. Let's do some to the side. Let's layer it, you know, do it like God did it. Do it like you see out in the wild. And I'm still adding here and there until I get it exactly where I look at it and say, yeah, okay, this is good. I wanna add one more little thing and I'm adding just a scrap piece of string that I have tied into a bow, just a simple bow and I'm adding it right on the edge of the sign on the top. And I think because it looks like rope, more like rope than my other jute and, and other cording, so I think that this looks really nice. I think it fits well with the project. And this is how it turned out. This just might be my favorite one, guys. Which one is your favorite? The first, second, or third? It's really hard for me to decide. And I've displayed it here for you so you can see what it looks like with some more cottage and rustic type items. These are my three projects. And I think that they go quite well together and I think that they are the perfect rustic, rustic cottage look. Do you agree? Be sure that you check out the description box so that you can find the links to the next video and the video previous. Be sure that you find the links to the Hostess uh, channel and that you go and check them out. Give them some love because they are showering lots of love in our community. Look at that. Look at those colors. If you are not already part of my YouTube family, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. And I want you to follow me on all my social media accounts, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. I love to, to talk to you and chat with you over there. I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you for stopping by, and I will see you again real soon. Bye. Today, I've got some easy autumn leaf DIYs for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. Welcome back. So we're going to start off with the wood cutout sign. Here are the paints that you're going to need. It's a pumpkin orange, a leaf green, and then the antiquing wax. You can use the leaf cutouts that you get from Dollar Tree. These are from last year. I had a few left. You're going to need three for this particular project and you can see one of them I'm recycling. I'm going to use some little plastic cups here to mix my paint and water. We're going to start off with the one that I experimented with. This is the back of a sign that I used um, for another project. So we're going to take a little bit of the antiquing wax, we're going to water it down, and I'm going to grab a brush. Start putting that on because we're going to use this as a stain, and that's why you make it a little bit weaker with the water. But you don't have to do it this way, you can put it on full strength if you want a darker color. I'm just going to go back over and wipe it off. 
And be careful when you choose your leaves because this one has a distinctive line through it that doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna flip it over and use the other side. Next, we're gonna start working on our green leaf. I'm gonna add some to that same little cup. I'm gonna add a little antiquing wax to that and just a tad of water. Then you're gonna mix that up really well. I'm just using a little stick here. Sometimes it can be, the texture of the antiquing wax is a little different from the acrylic paint, so you really gotta work with it to get them to mix. They kind of wanna separate um, from my experience. Then I'm just using a wet baby wipe to apply these. So you can see that you can do it with a brush or baby wipe. Then I'm just gonna rub it on. The lighter hand you use is going to give you a lighter color result. If you want it richer, then put it on a little bit thicker. I wasn't really sure which direction I was going with initially with this, so I just started off putting it down light, and then you can see by the time I get to this side of the leaf, I'm putting it down a little heavier. You can layer it on, so don't be worried if it's not giving you the initial result that you want. Doing a little at a time in light layers is a little bit easier to control than just going straight on with the heavy look, and then maybe you don't like it really heavy. So I'm going all around the stem, kind of getting in the edges too, and then I'm gonna put it aside to dry with the other one. Now we're gonna start in another bowl with some water and some paint and a little bit of that antiquing wax. This is just to keep the brightness out of the colors so that instead of looking bright and springy, our colors are going to look more rustic and aged. Now I'm just testing my color here on the stem. And I do like the way it looks, so I'm not gonna alter anything going to take a fresh wipe and start laying that on the leaf. What I love about doing it this way is that you can see the texture of the wood in the leaf. Watch how this texture just pops out as you lay the paint down. You can see there the texture in the wood. It is gorgeous and it just, you know, leaves have veins and leaves have texture and curves and, and that sort of thing. So I think that showing it off on a project like this it's just a really nice rustic way to put you know a little rustic decor in your home I guess is what I'm trying to say so here's the result after they're all dry and I love 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 the colors and how they turned out so now you just need to decide how you want to lay this out what kind of pattern you want to use and so that's what you see me doing now pay no mind to the glue spots that are on that brown leaf back there it's nothing I can do about it you won't have that on your project and there are ways to cover it up, of course. So I have decided that I like this. I'm gonna take my glue gun and put it down. I put it down on the underside, uh, on the bottom leaf, and I shouldn't have. You can see when I had to go to the orange leaf that I actually put it on that leaf first. Cause see, I had some glue that was in that crack I had to clean up that you didn't see. So it would be better just to put it on the upper leaf and then put it down. You don't have any mess left over or peeking through all those cracks if you do it this way. You don't have to put it on straight like this. I don't know why. To me, it just looked good this way, so I went ahead and left it. I'm just lining it up where I want it, pressing it down, and see the little, it looks like a little Christmas tree in there, doesn't it, in the center. Okay, so now we need to make a hanger for it, and I've decided that we're gonna make a bead hanger. You gotta make a knot at the end of your twine that is large enough to keep the bead from slipping off, so just do that according to the size of your beads that you choose. You know my little trick here with the hot glue on the end to make a little point so it's easier to thread the beads. These are thrifted beads. I've used them on many different projects. I had a huge bag of them. And you're just gonna start feeding them through. I used 24 beads for mine based on how far I wanted my sign to hang down. So you do whatever's appropriate. You can see here, I'm just measuring to see if this is how long I want it and then I'll make my knot in the end. And you can see these beads have a really large opening, so it takes, I think I ended up using three knots in each one of these, and you want to layer those knots right on top of each other. Okay, so see, you can see where I stained that other side. You're going to use some hot glue and press your knot right into the hot glue on the tips of the outer leaves. And this is going to be our hanger. 
and you can go in there after that glue is you know set up a little bit and trim off the excess you can feed it through that hole if you want to um, you can certainly do it that way but I have another idea of how to cover those holes and you'll see that in just a moment now I'm gonna just put some beads underneath there to hold it up until my glue is dry you can see I'm just kind of that way I don't glue it down to my table and now we're gonna make some cute little easy bunny ear or shoelace bows to go on the top of each of those leaves kind of gives it a little bit of a farmhouse look I think gonna make the bow as big as you want it cut your tails down and then I'll use each bow to measure against each other so I get them as close together as I can get them in size and then you know I kind of eyeball the tails too to make sure the tails are the same length that might not be important to you and if it's not you can skip that step it almost looks like I have threaded it right through the leaf and tied it off with a bow but I didn't want to leave the inside without a bow because I think they they all would look better if they looked similar so I'm just gonna add one over the hole in this one as well and the next step is going to be completely up to you this is how it looks now you got to think about what you want to do to your sign if you want to leave it alone if you want to put a metal sign this came from Dollar Tree I think I may have thrifted it but you can get the big metal signs from Dollar Tree you can take things off of other projects put them wherever you like be sure you follow me on my social media Pinterest Facebook and Instagram okay number two is a 3d leaf sign this is a sign that has come out recently at Dollar Tree at mine anyway I'm just going to use this to make a very another very easy project you're gonna pop this off you can save those little roses for another project if they stay together probably gonna go in my Valentine crafting box if you can peel this off you may certainly do so I tried and did not have very much luck so I just decided to work with it I'm gonna take some of this blue and white plaid paper it's it's a background paper but you could certainly use gift wrap or craft paper whatever you have blue is a very good color this year for fall so I'm gonna go with this and I am cutting like a preschooler but you're gonna trim this out and then take a glue stick put that down all over there especially around the edges don't forget your edges your corners you want to make sure that this stays on we always want to achieve a high-end look so we're gonna do all those little extra things to make our projects look beautiful and last a long time so once I get that lined up and I know it's a plaid so you want to be sure that you kind of line it up so you know that you don't have crooked um, lines whenever you turn your project over so that's what I did and then I'm just pressing it down and I put my mat underneath there because I know that I'm going to be trimming this paper off it's not important to use any type of uh, sanding on this because it's going to be inside the frame and you won't really see it I'm taking my Dollar Tree utility knife it's just in a three pack so be sure you pick those up if you are looking for some I think it was in the automotive section and then trim that out doesn't have to be perfect because like I say it's gonna be in a frame so there we go nice clean back nice straight front and this is how it will look you can paint your frame if you'd like but I um, decided I wanted to leave that alone all right here's some options for you you can take any type of a chipboard wood leaf or leaf stickers or anything you want to make some type of a pattern this would certainly be cute if you wanted to use this technique you can use these faux leaves like the silk leaves I guess you would call them you can pick them off of vines and branches that, that you get at Dollar Tree if you like you can use scraps and now since I've decided that I love this yellow and orange with this blue background I want to make it look a little more realistic by cutting off those little knobby ends 
at a slant as if they've broken off the tree. And I want to make them dimensional. So I'm going to take some of these little blocks that you get out of the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree and use those as little, like a mini riser for my leaf so that it will stand away from the frame and really make some dimension as if the leaf is free falling. And I love that. Add your hot glue, press that down, and then I'm going to do one more. And I've got some tape stuck on my hand. And then just secure that right there. I'm not going to put anything underneath the bottom of the leaf because I want it to appear as it's pointing downward. We're going to do the same thing with the other leaf. And I've decided we're going to make these falling leaves. So we're going to put the tips of them going downward and both of the branch parts going upward. That's all you need to secure these. You can use Jenga blocks too. And it won't show once you have it hanging up. You see how it stands out? It looks really nice considering that this is sort of a boxed frame as well. It looks, I think, looks very cute. And it was so simple to do. Just go ahead and clamp your back back down. And there you go. Now, you can use it as a sitting sign or I cut this off of something that originally came from Target. It was a little flag sign. I cut the flag sign off and I kept the, I, I don't know, that straight piece there on the bottom and the beads all intact so I could use them again. So what do you think about that? Think about that. You can take pieces off of other projects and other things that you find at the thrift store or Dollar Tree and use them in a way that maybe they haven't been used previously. And I thought that would be a really good way to use it on the sign and I love the results that I get from it. I'm just clamping this down until it dries and stays in place. If you want to use something more permanent and you intend to hang this up out, you know, where it may be getting some weather or a lot of people walking by, you might want to use some E6000 or some super glue on it. But it works for me just like this. What do you think? This is easy. You could do this, guys. You could totally do this for just a few dollars. And remember, it's inspiration. Number three, mini leaf sitter. Okay, this is the third one, and this is easy too. I'm going to use the craft knife. We're going to use some type of a base. I'm just going to use a wood round ornament. I have a square leaf. You can find these about anywhere. And then a little pad of fall paper. I'm looking for a color or a print that I like. And I believe that I will use this grateful sign. Give thanks, Thanksgiving. Yep, this will be a good one for this project. You can also use little fabrics. These are some little vintage fabric pieces or vintage inspired. I'm not sure that they're vintage. This glue stick will work perfectly to put this down. Again, I've said it a billion times. I know I say it a lot. But get all those corners. Get all the edges. You want it to stick down well for you because it's easier to deal with when it comes to cutting it out. And it gives it a better finished look. I'm putting this on at an angle. I'm going to press it down. I'm going to take my wallpaper smoother and smooth it down from the inside outward. We want those bubbles to run away from us. So we press them to the outside. Okay, now whatever you want to use to cut out, you can use to cut out. I'm just going to use my little utility knife, my craft knife, my cutter, whatever you want to call it. These are not going to be perfect and I am not aiming for perfection because in this project we will be using some sanding to get our edges in the right shape. So you can see there's some little excess that didn't come off just like that. Instead of a sanding block I'm going to use a folded piece of sandpaper because it will get into those cracks and corners and curves a little bit easier. So I'm just going to use this to start with and you can see there that it is sanding it smoothly down. It's taking those little white pieces right off. And by the way you can paint the edges if you prefer a painted look but I, I like that it is kind of a raw look. Check this trick out. This is an emery board or a fingernail file. 
you can use this to get in those tight spaces to really, really work those little pieces out of there. Okay, so once it is done, this is how it looks. You can Mod Podge over the type if, top if you would like, but you don't have to. And you could also do both sides if you wanted something reversible. So here's an option. I always try to give you an option. You can put this leaf down on the raw wood like this for a rustic look. But if you're going for something a little more cottage core, you can take a piece of this fabric or something that is coordinated but with a vintage sort of look and you could put it down like that. But for my home, I'm going to leave it a little bit more on the rustic side. So I'm trying to see where I need my glue to go and I'm going to add it straight on down on my wood round. So this is it so far once the glue is set up. And I'm going to layer one more leaf on top. This is a leaf ornament. This came from the thrift store. You can use a regular leaf on top and put a sticker on it or you can put a sticker right on top of your leaf, whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to add that down. It doesn't fit perfectly like a puzzle piece, but it's close enough. And I'm not looking for perfection. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? Thankful for you. I'm thankful for you. All my subscribers, anybody who watches my videos, every thumbs up, every share, every like, I am very thankful for all of that. I never take it for granted. Okay, so to finish off this little leaf, I'm going to just use a piece of this cotton twine, make me a tiny little bow, and I'm going to put that right on that little opening on the top. Do whatever you like with that. What do you think about that? Isn't that sweet? That's so cute and would look so nice in a vignette or on a tiered tray. Okay, so I have left my leaf sign open. I want suggestions. How should I finish it? Once I finish it, if I use your idea, I'm going to share that on Instagram and give you credit for it. So be sure you give me suggestions on that big leaf sign. Okay, these are the three easy signs or easy ideas for leaves for fall on a budget using Dollar Tree items and thrifted things. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Today we're making a rustic farmhouse fall wreath. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. So you're going to choose whatever types of ribbon you like. I'm going to choose three different kinds, and I'm just showing you that you can get a great variety in the fall section at Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some thrifted, gorgeous burlap ribbon. There's no wire in here. It's just so pretty and ruffled. I'm going to use a thrifted pumpkin. Just going to use the sign part in the middle. I'm going to use a Dollar Tree wreath. And I'm going to use a thrifted pick. And I think these originally came from Walmart. They had a yellow clearance sticker on them. Okay, so this wreath is about a 12 by 12. It's kind of squished out of shape. It's more like an oval than a circle. So I'm just going to have to work around that. I'm going to start by wrapping this wreath. Just like this with a little bit of hot glue. I'm going to protect my fingers here. Add a good bit of glue. Press that down into the wreath. Then I'm going to start winding around where the fringe goes right next to that center ruffle. Today I am participating with Nadia for Wreath Wednesday. DIYs by Nadia. Y'all be sure that you go check her out. I'm going to have her video link and her channel link in the description box. Thank you Nadia for the opportunity. Okay, so we're going to do this all the way around. You can see I'm lining that fringe up because this is layered burlap. If you don't have a layered burlap, you can certainly use just the regular plain pieces and just be sure that you cover up all of that bind wreath underneath. You can certainly use a styrofoam wreath. You won't be able to see it, but you have to be careful about glue on those. Just keep that in mind. I'm just going to keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping until we get back to the beginning. 
Now we're going to put more glue down and press it down into that and hold it for a minute so that it doesn't unwind itself. Keep in mind if you're putting this outside you're going to want to use something more like a Gorilla Glue so that the humidity doesn't make your hot glue release. Time to sharpen those scissors I think. So I've just taken the stand off the bottom of the pumpkin and I'm going to work with the orange side of the pumpkin rather than the chalkboard sign. I think I'm going to put it on the bottom and we're going to use this wreath like an oval so it's going to stand up like an egg. I'm going to cut off two pieces of my floral wire and we're going to use those to glue down to that pumpkin and hold it to the wreath. I also have two black pieces of scrap paper here that I'm going to use to put on top of our glue. So folding it in half like a hairpin, I'm going to put a good bit on each side, pressing it down, and then pressing the paper right over the top. It just gives it a little more security so that it doesn't come off while we're finagling it to get it into that burlap on the wreath. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the other side. And I'm just using the clamps that came from Dollar Tree because they help hold everything in place when you're moving it around so nothing comes dislodged. After the glue has had a chance to set up, we'll continue. Okay, so here we go. We're moving the clamps. And then making sure again that the pumpkin is where I want it to sit on this wreath, I'm going to press these wires to the back and thread one piece through each side. Just like so. And then twist them around to secure them in place and clip off any excess. There's a little slack there in my wire, so I will be able to push the pumpkin down a bit so it will sit flush on the bottom. So now I've got it where it needs to be, right sitting in the bottom. Now we're going to start working on the greenery or the leaf part of the arrangement. This is what gives it that rustic look. We're going to use some colorful fall leaves. I'm going to cut them off their little plastic picks start putting a little base underneath this pumpkin almost like it's sitting in a nest of leaves or a leaf pile who doesn't like sitting in a leaf pile okay so I'm just gonna add some hot glue I'm gonna tuck around and over that little glue strip don't be bothered by the fact that it's exposed and terrible looking on the bottom because it'll be covered up I'm just going to be sure that I've taken a variety of the leaves, the ones that match the, the look that I'm going for, and I'm just going to place them around. Not so much in a pattern, but just, you know, like maybe they fell down out of the tree themselves. A little lighter one on top. See this is easy, easy. And you can just be creative and do this however you want. You can also add some little mini pine cones or berries or whatever you like on yours. I'm going to add some on the top and I'm going to add some of these pretty little white flowers that came from Dollar Tree. I know that some of the ribbon I'm using on top is going to be white so I want to use some of this white down here in the bottom too. kind of want to carry that color through. So I'm just cutting off the little knobby parts on these two. And then I'm going to use the other flower with the little stem part to lay it sideways underneath there. And it almost looks like one single hydrangea. So far so good, right? Now we're gonna choose the ribbon. This is the really fun part. We're gonna make a pretty bow. I'm going to use some plaid ribbon. This was thrifted and I have two different Dollar Tree ribbons. They are all wire ribbon and we're going to use 18 inch pieces. You 
see my ruler down there on the bottom 18 inches okay very simply we're gonna fold them over pinch in the middle and then walk our fingers to each other and we have a bow simple this is a quick wreath this is nothing difficult so the bow should be the same we're gonna do the same thing with the green same exact process folding it over pinching it and then walking your fingers toward the other fingers you're going to stack these up in whatever order that you would like them to appear when you put them down on your pumpkin on your wreath rather same thing here with the plaid and then we're just going to put him right on top you can fasten this down with a zip tie like I am or you can use some floral wire or a twist tie whatever you want to use to put those together fluff the bow a little bit that's what I'm doing trying to make sure everything is where it should be then do your final tightening I'm gonna cut off the edges fluff out that bow and then I can start either dovetailing it which is what I thought I was gonna do at first or just cutting it at a slant and that's what I'm doing here just gonna do slants in each one of those tails all the way through and all the colors so far so good right easy easy to do okay now I'm going to put this off to the side over here and right now I'm just looking to see if the bow is the size I want it, if it needs to be trimmed, what I want to do with it. And I think I'll use another zip tie here to just attach it right onto the wreath. This is so easy to do. Make sure that when you pull it tight that you pull that little knobby part to the back so that it doesn't show on your beautiful wreath. I'm going to fluff out my little bows, the tails, and the little loops. I'm not really concerned whether or not those tails are even. This is Rustic Farmhouse and we are not looking for perfection. Now I'm going to cut two eight inch pieces of this plaid because we're gonna extend this out a bit. And I'm going to cut two eight inch pieces of the green. You can certainly do the tan color as well if you want. But I had the, the burlap in the back, so I didn't feel like I needed to have more of that color. I'm going to fold them over and dovetail them. You can do them at the same time. Makes it a little bit more timely. You can get things done a little quicker if you do it like this. But you do whichever way you are most comfortable. Alright, so I'm going to fold it in half. And I think I want to tuck these on either side of that bow to extend it outward because I feel like it needed more. I could have added more leaves but I feel like the bow needed a little bit better of a presence. So this is what I came up with. Now I'm just going to put the glue on there and press it down on that burlap underneath. Here's my glue gun that I'm trying today. And I am going to put it underneath this one too. Okay, so far so good. Now let's do the same thing with the plaid. We're gonna fold it in half and tuck it underneath on that side with a little bit of hot glue. It will fit nicely right in there. And see how that just automatically extends that bow out? Certainly if you have a different bow in mind, something that's bigger, you could do a bigger bow or rather than using 18 inch pieces, you could try 24 inches and make an even larger bow to fill up your space. But I like this. I think it's cute. I like my little petite bow. And I think that this bow is okay. I want the main, the main part of the attention for this wreath to be the pumpkin. But I think that bow, that bow grabs your attention too, doesn't it? 
one more of those flowers gonna put it right in the center of that little bow I feel like that sets it off perfectly I'm going to double up my leaves you can do this it's so easy just a little glue in between and then press that up right up in the middle I've got lots of spider webs because I'm using a cool temperature for this rather than my high heat glue gun now for the hanger I'm just going to take a long piece of jute and I'm showing you here what I already had done and just going to tie a knot just like that I'm going to slip it underneath the bow tails and then press the ends right through the loop sorry that you can't see that part but you get the idea and then that's how we're going to hang it and you can fluff your tails you can fluff your bows and our project is complete do you like this little wreath and will you be trying this wreath do you enjoy rustic farmhouse decor if you do you should subscribe to my channel because that's what my channel is all about that with a little bit of cottage as well thank you Nadia I had a great time doing this thank you all for stopping by and I'll see you again soon bye